What pushes your pen? What pushes my pen? Yeah. It could be anything. It can be anything. Just it could be life experiences. It could be you know something that I'm reading at the time. Um, sometimes, but it's not. It's not. It's no longer competition at all. I mean, there's a competitive. There's a competitive spirit there, but the competitive part about it is the first thing that I ever nurtured, as far as the lyricist, being being like a battle lyricist who could shred other MCs. That was the, that was my first love with the pen, uh -huh. and um, I think that way of thinking, just as as far as it pertains to my evolution of uh, of my growth as a man, it's gotten me into a lot of situations that don't that doesn't suit me in terms of just my development as a as a human. Smack rapper, only smack rapper that you know is smack rappers. Got bars I can hang with the backpackers. Trap star, I don't hang with the backpackers. I'm in the hood with the work you heard, making fiends leave earth you heard. Got your baby mama thirst you heard. Feel the flow, nigga, throw it in reverse. This the wave you need to surf you heard. Go gym, I need a bomb I could drop on you niggas. Bad boy, I'm never gonna stop for you niggas. I don't give a fuck who you got as the illest. I solidify my spot with gorillas. Now I'm rock with you niggas. All right, we back. My expert opinion. <sighs> we got, I'm, 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 I'm jumping ahead of myself. Hit that like, hit that share. Let everybody know you in here. Don't cost you no paper unless you's a mother hater. I want to say shout out to all the new subscribers. We doing like 60,000 subscribers a month. It's incredible. The growth is incredible. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody that's been tuning in and following this, this movement of real hip hop conversations. It's dope. Mac. Yeah, man. Mess with you, bro. Bigger, man of God. That's it? That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Six words every episode. Six words. <laughs> Heineken, what's poppin'? Just want to say congratulations. Thank you, sir. You know you started a record label? Yes, yes, thank you. So Coming through. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it, appreciate it, appreciate it. And DFG, DFG Records, man. And, and you know we got an ill guest, but we're gonna talk to Esso first, because it's gonna be turned the fuck off. Yeah, this shit about to be crazy. <laughs> it's good, nigga. Same old, same old. Just shout out to all the people that's been following. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Clicking the subscribe button, Ooh. calling for DMs, for consultations and all that good stuff. I appreciate the following. I appreciate the support. Keep it coming. And shout out to all my people in Harlem and my high school, A.A. Philip Randolph on 135th Street. Because they uh, definitely support us big time. I, I definitely want to throw in there, um, we got a new segment called The Drop. Where artists come through, they break down the, the lyrics to their songs. I want to put more emphasis on lyricism because that's important, very important. I mean, that's the art. It's an art. It's like a code. We can't lose that. So for all the new artists that want to uh, get on get on the drop episode, reach out to us, myexpertopinionpodcast at gmail.com, and we'll work something out. Speaking of lyricism, <laughs> we got the king of Detroit in the building. Now, there's a couple things we're going to get. But look, look, matter of fact, let's, let's go straight to it. We got Royce the Five Nine. Thank you. How Thank you. are you, sir? I'm well, man. I'm well. Thank you for having me. It's yeah. an honor and a privilege to be here, man. You already, bro. You're I, lo already. I, love, I love the show, especially with the new additions. Y'all add, like, an amazing color to it. Well, I, I appreciate, appreciate that. It. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Appreciate it. Congratulations appreciate it. on all your success, too. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Oh yeah, shout out to Funk Master Flex dropping bombs on Super Gangster. You guys go out there, you know, uh, stream the stream the single. Uh, the whole project is on the way. Of course, I'm just putting everything together now, so be patient. But it's coming. But you have a new project dropping. Yeah, it's called the Heaven Experience. It's Heaven basically ex it's basically just um, I regain control of a lot of the old masters. Mm -hmm. of mine from like when I first started in my career, mm -hmm. which is super important to me. Right. So the goal was to kind of take them down off of streaming platforms and then just figure out a way to 
to re-release them. Right. Just so they exist again. They just they're just present. Like right. that was that was important to me because you know the song. Yeah. Each individual song is like an asset now. You know, it's a lot different than how it used to be. Right. Know? So um, and it, this is a result of a, a new new law being passed on that, or something no. was overturned that allowed artists to go back and recreate their music. I heard about put that. it back out. I heard about that. No, I, it wasn't it wasn't that scenario, but I have heard about that. I don't know much about that, but I heard about it. This is just this is just um when we did our deal um back in the day. I don't even remember what year it was, but um in the contract they had control of the master for I think seven years or something like that. So um some of it involved me um being able to just buy, contractually take over control of it. Some of it was me having to buy some stuff back. Mm-hmm. It's a few different scenarios, but, you know, we're just taking it pieces at a time. So as I get stuff, as I regain control of things, I'm just kind of figuring out cool things to do with them. Well, what, what records were the, the ones that you definitely had to get back? Everything. Everything. It's all mine. It's all mine. It's all, it's all stuff that I created. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have a problem back then signing away um, control of the masters because... I came into the game being being taught to think kind of short sighted, you know what I mean, and, and that was just standard. It was just standard then. Right. Now things are different with the evolution of tech. You got companies that don't even necessarily know about music, who are just investing, who are just throwing monies at things, and everything is a play for the masters. Everything, every motive is to get the masters because right. that's, that's the happened. money. That's the money. You know yeah. what I mean? Think about it, like. When it was just when it was just the, the, the physical copies, you know, you they go out one time. People pick up pick them up one time, two times from the local record store, and you know that's a sale, a two sales, three sales. Now, each song goes on the platform, and it just exists forever. It's just constantly running. Yeah, and it, it depends on what you do. There's things you can do years later to spike spike the streams. But it's always running. It's constantly running. So I personally think that um, the streaming platforms and the record labels are making the killing off of streaming, contrary to the to the belief of most. Right. I think that a lot of people are assuming this sense is different that there's no money in streaming. Mm. It's money in streaming. It's money in ownership in streaming. Right. You know. So um, it was a it was a very smooth transition for the record labels and, and the streaming companies. All they needed to do was just get in the bed with one another. They already had, it was already standard for the record label to have ownership of the master. So all they had to do was license it to the streaming platforms and even invest in the streaming platforms. Mm -hmm. So you got all of the major labels pretty much together as one, as a conglomerate, in bed with the main streaming, streaming platforms. platforms. Right. And then now they're presenting it to us and saying, this is what you guys are gonna get. Yeah, you're gonna right. get a fraction of whatever. Seventeen percent. Yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna come up with whatever that number is. Right. Without you being able right. to negotiate it, you know. And right. that I think that's where it becomes problematic for the artist. So then after that, now you got the, the Gazis and the and the guys like that who came behind that and then just went for volume. Start signing up everything. And now just a catalog of just shit that just once it adds up, it adds up to something something right. great if you're of that thinking so now I think it's, it's important now more than ever for artists to be um, ownership minded right well when it comes to streaming um, the money's in the cachet when you have a, a, a large catalog I mean it adds up just like YouTube you know what I mean you could have five episodes of something dope but if you got 200 of them the people that are just seeing it for the first time today go back and they watch all the other ones mm -hmm. and it, it just piles up. You know what I'm saying? And you're absolutely right. And it's the same thing with the music. Re remember, remember the way that we're taught. All, we, all you got to do is grow up watching TV and looking at the Internet. You're automatically going to be of the thinking that when the album comes out, what's the first week number? Where is it on the charts? And then after the two or three month rollout, that's it on to the next thing. You know what I mean? Right. And really, yeah, we should no longer even look at it like that because it's just like what you said. It's never over once it's out there. Once you upload the video, it's there. Once you upload the music, it's there. And you know, you may put something out later, years later, that may get somebody's attention and make them go all the, the way, way back. back. Right. 
you know, so um, I think we definitely should have always looked at it like a long play. We should have always went in there of the thinking of to make the, the, the music that lasts the longest time, try to create something that could be self-serving to you for the longest period of time possible. And, and I, it, think, I think Versus is another platform that's kind of showing you that. Yeah, definitely. Yo, when Ja Rule got up there, shit, man, he was, he was just no, reeling not, off joints listen, all night that I totally forgot about. I'm like, fuck. Listen, I, I predicted that the Versus was going to hit Madison Square Garden as soon as COVID was over. Yeah. And it did. Jada Kiss, I mean, I'm saying Jada Kiss. The Locks, Locks versus Dipset. Another example. Right. And from that night, I was in the building with, with, with Buster. Shout out to Buster. And just being there and seeing the energy and then walking out and seeing how many people were posting and the whole week, it was just a, a huge conversation. I know those, well, they say the, the versus the influx for streaming was like 400%. Mm -hmm. Every time for every artist. For every artist, consistently. Yeah. They do that deep dive we talked about. They go back and look. Same with, same with deaths. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same deaths with deaths and, and beefs. And you know, that's, that's where um, the talking points start, when people start to say shit like, oh, the labels are just profiting off death. They, they like when y'all beefing, because just, they just make money. They're saying that because they own the master. Right. Yeah, they own all the music. So yeah, yeah they, they benefit the most off of each spike in streams, because you know, they're the beneficiaries, you know what I mean, so. Were you business minded the whole time when you came in? Because to get your masters back, in seven years, that seven year reversion, right? Mm -hmm. Most people get 12. Was that because you was hot already? Or you just had a good lawyer that knew that this was gonna be a good idea for you to have your masters back in the long run? Well, I'm not gonna lie and say I was business minded. I wasn't, I mean, but I wanted to be. I wanted to be. I think I was as business minded as I could be at 20 years old, at 20 years old coming into a business that I had absolutely no, I didn't even know how to make albums, let alone how to negotiate. Come on, man, I took a, a million, I took a million dollar deal with Tommy Boy instead of a $250,000 deal with Dr. Dre. Mm. How, how many albums was that? The Tommy Boy deal? Yeah. I think it was five, five albums. Five albums. I think Is that a big what, mistake? That's what it was standard. Was it a big mistake? <laughs> um, I don't, I don't know if I can say because because you brought yeah. it up in, in comparison, it's almost like there's a slight little regret or yeah, overthinking. No, not, it's not a regret, but um, looking at it in retrospect, um, with the wisdom that I have now from, from experience, it, it wasn't the best business decision. Right. But it's hard to say. Um, what would have been. Yeah, what, what I would have did mm. with, with Dre, because right. I still would have been that same naive kid, now even with a greater opportunity, that's one fact that the opportunity was greater with Dre. That's a fact. We can't dispute that. Right. But everything else would just be speculation. You know, I, I don't know how I would have handled it because I ended up losing the Tommy Boy deal. You know what I mean? Like I ended up, um, I, think the, I think they dropped me. They dropped me. Then I went to Sony. I did another deal. Um, album got leaked. I ended up sitting for a minute asking for a release and then they let me go. All of these things were just due to, to my you know, um, an experience. my immaturity, yeah. experience, um, partying. Well, don't going, kick yourself crazy. Don't don't kick yourself too bad. Sticky Finger sat right there, and he said he um for extra two hundred and fifty thousand, I think it was two hundred eight hundred to two, a million. Yeah, yeah, it was three hundred. He took the eight hundred thousand instead of the half a million he could have got to be on aftermath. Well, here's the kicker. I'm not kicking myself at all. I'm actually looking at it like, I feel like Dre was supposed to tell, he was supposed to advise me. Mm. You know, n n now, let me be clear. I'm, I don't harbor any resentment toward Dre. Me and Dre are super cool. Right. Um, I think I understand his position. You got this young kid who you invited out to Cali to kind of help out. Um, this is when he was, he was working on The Chronic, and, and this was coming off of that Aftermath album that people kind of didn't like, and that was like the first thing that he did that people didn't like. Been yeah. there, done that. Yeah, yeah. and then he, um, he also had to split with Suge, and people were kind of counting him out, you know yeah. what I mean? So the, the fact that even though I went to him and asked him, I told him the situation, and I asked him, what should I do? And he told, he told me, he's like, yo, you should take that. You're not, you're not, you're not going to get that nowhere else. I'm going to rock with you regardless, you know? And um, 
it just didn't it didn't pan out that way to me. You yeah. know what I mean? And I feel like I feel like he may have felt the way just for the fact that I was entertaining. That you asked him. That yeah, asked that him I was that. even entertaining it. So I can I can understand it from his side, but from my side. Well, was it a play for to see if he was going to ante up? No. Not at all. No, I, I wanted to know what he thought I should do, you know, because all I was hearing was a million dollars. Yeah. Well, at I the thought, end of the day, he don't you know, people don't know everybody's situation. That might be that could have been life changing for your family. And if you felt like the money he was offering wasn't, you know, wasn't that. Then yeah, he, well, who was he to tell you don't take that? Who was he, te- he to tell me? <clears throat> somebody who. Yeah, he's a legend. I'll be like, somebody, somebody, don't take that money, young boy. Somebody, Stay with me. Somebody right. who knows. Somebody who knows exactly what he was about to send me over there to do. He knew. Mm. You know. He knew, but it, it was kind of like, okay. Most of the time in this business, we kind of, we kind of let each other. I'm gonna I'm let you hang yourself. That's all of this. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. let you. I'm gonna let you hang yourself, but I. I really feel like the mentorship aspect of it is a is a is a Lacking. thing that needs to that needs to be more present, man. You right. know, because what I did was I went over to Tommy Boy. I had this um, white A and R named Max, and he was courting. They were courting me over there. Um, and now, mind you, I had already been over to Tommy Boy to do a meeting along with right. damn near every other label on the East Coast. Yeah. And I played all of them just the same music, and Tommy Boy passed on it. But once they found out I was out there working with Dre and Marshall. They immediately wanted to meet with me again. And when I went back out there, I played them the exact same music and they acted like it was the greatest shit that they ever heard. They're gonna kill you for that straw, by the way. <laughs> yeah, so so when so when sorry about that. Um, so when I when I um when they recorded me, they were taking me to the he was taking me to the strip club, you know what I'm saying? Like buying me all kind of liquor and, and shit, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Basically just feeding feeding the addiction that I was already genetically probably predisposed to to. Right. You know, so I think the, the Dre's, the Puffs, the Master P's, the Shugs are the ones who can step in and say, all right, Mr. White, man, is this is this is this where you would take your son to be courted? Would you want your son to be courted here? This is where the Dre's, the Puffs, the Hoves say, no, nah, that's not a good decision. Right. You stay here. It's not you not you don't do a record deal to make money. You do a record deal so you can begin to start building you. You can build you over here because we're building a dynasty over here. You already attached to Marshall. I already got this plan for you, that plan for you. Don't worry about money. You know what I mean? You go over there just for the money and you're going to get what comes with that. And that's exactly what I did. You know what I mean? So, Well, is that option still open? What option? For you to work, work, work with Dre freely. I mean, I've, I've, I've worked with him over the years. Right. You know what I mean? Just on his stuff. Anytime I call Dre to ask him for like a beat or something, it's like, <laughs> let me let me hear what you're working on. Right. You know what I mean? Oh, I called him. Remember when we did Total Slaughter? Yeah. I called him and asked him to do a drop on his phone. It, it took him two months, and guess what he sent me? What? A whole commercial. Produced commercial. Because mm. that's how he thinks. He right. doesn't think he doesn't think small scale. He thinks of right. a movie. Mm-hmm. Everything for him is a movie. Is it possible that when you did step to him? He saw the immaturity. He saw like maybe this is too big of a project for me to take on. As far as not not what you would do musically, right. but what you would do on personality wise. Yeah, yeah, probably. I mean, we could speculate. We could speculate many things. You know what I mean? But um, you know, you know how um, how a lot of artists and a lot of fans kind of hold the Dre's, the Puffs, the Hoes to a different standard than they do regular labels. Right. They're okay. But that came regular- in time. Yeah, At that they, time, yeah, it was a, uh, I don't know, because this aftermath joint drop, people ain't really feeling it. I got a roster of people that was on that that's not really, you know what I mean? So at that time, it was still questionable. Yeah. I think after the M's, after, I mean, Dre was already who he was. But well, they look at it, look really at it like got this. established that. Look at it like this. I would have jumped off a bridge if he'd have told me to. Put it like that. Did right. he know that? He he, of course he knew that, uh-huh. but Dre, Dre, Dre did the same thing with me, Yummy, and Rock. Like, he offered us a deal and wanted us to go right to the back room with Mike Lynn and sign it. And all I did to Dre was say, Cash Money wanted to give us a deal, and we met with them personally. I just want to go, because they're in the street. 
at this time. Right. I said, I just want to fly back the, the, home. This is this, taking over for the 9-9 Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to fly back home, right. and I want to just tell them face to face, I'm rocking with Dr. Dre. Right. Mike Lynn never picked my call up ever again. Because I left, like, he, he, he played the way he played. Once, once, once Royce said, because I talked to them, I feel like that he didn't really rock with that. He did that same thing to us, my dude. And I didn't get it because we was young too. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And once I got home and they wasn't picking up the phone call no more, I said, oh, shit, I lost this deal with the greatest producer of <laughs> all time. Mm -hmm. Wow. I lost the deal. And it wasn't nothing crazy. It wasn't because I was wilding or nothing like that. It was just that I wanted to keep business straight with other people who we talked they, to. They have that same responsibility and that same weight on the other side, too. The same way that they have the power to tell an artist, hey, jump off a bridge and you'll do it. They also take blame and criticism that, like you said, Hove, Puff. Mm -hmm. when, when, the label, when, when an album flops, somebody will turn around and go, Atlantic fucked up my record. Mm -hmm. If you sign with Diddy, you he. go, Diddy fucked up. Diddy fucked. Like Diddy he fucked, fucked me over. Yeah. He <laughs> gave me. <laughs> <laughs> that, they get. They take all the blame. Yeah. They do. Meanwhile, the dude who runs, the dude who's the like, Leo Cohen could be standing right next to you. You wouldn't even know it was him unless you knew that that's Leo, Leo Cohen. Cohen. He'll right. just be standing there. But let let Hov be standing next to you. You see what I'm saying? Those right. bullets. Those bullets land different when you place in the blame. It's just it's just a different thing. I can understand with that said, I can understand why if you were perceived to be a headache or you were perceived to be immature, mentoring you at that time might I don't have the I don't have the bandwidth to take on what this kid's gonna bring. With well him. what were you like at that time? I was a joy to be around, bro. <laughs> 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 that was 20 years old. You know what right. I mean? he was, his frontal lobe you know, was not developing. He was wilding. I think, you, you know what? You know what? A better way to look at it would be, um, let's, let's try to imagine some of the things that he had been through with artists up to that point. And it may not have been, it may not have been anything that I was doing that, exhibit, that exhibited such headache behavior, but that could have just been... A, a signal, a trigger for him. Right. You know what I mean? What if, what, if, what, if, what, may, what this might turn into? You know what right. I mean? Because we, we've been cool, you know, you know, this whole time. You know right. what I'm saying? But it was just like, to me, if if a better decision was gonna be made, I just feel like the only way it would it would have been possible is through mentorship. It's through um, him taking an extra step and just caring caring enough to where to not let me make a bad decision. You know what right. I mean? Well. Um, how do, how how will you change everybody? Hmm? How are you changing that now? I mean, you know, I'm being the change that I want to see, you know. But I I've had experiences with artists, you know. I'm 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 usually I'm mostly on the mentorship side, but I've had experiences with artists where it was just like, I can't handle it. I can't I can't deal with it. Like what who? is he? Oh, what is like he? who? Uh, no. Like who? No, nobody did, did I would say names, you know what I'm saying? But I mean, just dealing with younger artists is tough. It's tough. It's tough, especially during the internet era where they have all of this information at their fingertips. I don't think the knowledge, knowledge is, is to be at your fingertips. I think it's, it's something that you should pursue. And um, I think that the fact that you, that you don't have to really go on that pursuit of knowledge and you don't have to really seek knowledge it's just kind of readily available to you. Right. You 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 get you find yourself in a situation where you don't really know what to believe because now you got knowledge that you can just just access, but it's they give you options of what the truth, what the right, real right. truth and is. You get to pick with <laughs> what, what, whatever. Oh, we did this one day. Bigger has said something. I thought, what were we talking about? That happened about a couple of weeks. Something in the yeah. soda, something. The embryos. The embryos. The embryos. The embryo. The embryo. Coca Cola. And, the, and yeah. there were sites yeah. that backed up his claims, and then there were sites that backed up our claims. So it's mm -hmm. like, you really don't. We really don't have any. Because it's not knowledge. That's information. Right. There's a, and there's a difference. There's a difference. The information is cool. The information is everywhere. But how you how you disseminate it, how you put it to use, that that takes knowledge. Mm -hmm. And that nine times out of ten takes time. And you can't it's hard to tell. And I'm it's hard to talk to somebody who's right here and explain to him, you know a lot and you don't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. You know a lot. There's plenty of information. You typed in whatever whatever dot com and mm -hmm. here comes everything that you said was right. 
and it's still wrong. And I'm trying to explain to you why what you read doesn't apply to you specifically, mm -hmm. and you don't want it. That's why I was asking. It was a perfect. Well, it, was, it, it's was a you catch, been too much of a headache. It's a catch twenty two because I'm a I'm a firm believer that where there's a choice, there are no victims. Once you make the choice, you stand on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like when I see artists like uh, Mace upset that Diddy won't <clears throat> release his masters. Is it, it, is it a business thing or is it a friendship thing? Or are you like, yo, it, okay, as a friend, I would assume that you would feel obligated to just give me my masters. But as a business, it's like, you know, well, that's, that's kind of hard to friend, balance. Though. Mace didn't want to give it. He was trying to buy him. He put up two million. He that wanted, to buy, he wanted to buy him from yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but either way, but buying saying, it or not, buying it or not, it's still his option to no, say absolutely. no. Absolutely. We just saw Irv Gotti um, say no to Ashanti on Drink Champs. Shout out to Nori. Shout out to EFN. He said no to Ashanti. Yeah. She but wants to get her masters. Masters. I, I thought she was the one that is recreating Created. everything. Well, she well, said she's going to recreate it all. So, it, And that's not the same situation where you're taking down your old music and recreating it and re-uploading it. So what, what exactly is that? Just getting them, just getting them back contractually after after the the, the, the time contractual period. agreement. The year, you the own amount it of time is right. Up. Yeah, I own it now. So, so how does how does it work? Does the label they they take it down for it's a licensing? Right, it's a license. It's a they only license. The they only license the masters. Which means the masters. they didn't help y'all make the album. After, no, they did. We still have, we still have money. But you still got nice. We still have money to make the album. Still have money in the market. But when the licensing commitment was over, we have the option. Version. So you don't, uh, but why can't it be the same version? Why would it have to be a, a new recording? It doesn't, it doesn't no, his doesn't happen. Happen. Not, not, not my situation. Because her Ashanti, situation. Yeah, because, oh, her. because Irv won't give it back to her. Right. She's remaking How she's going to get around it is she can recreate everything like and a now cover. she owns it. Yes. Like a cover. Yes. <sighs> but his reversion is rare because seven years is very good. Yeah, usually it's, it's 12 term. years. Well, sometimes they just and, don't give them. Like, and and they they usually you have to recoup your money back First. and then it's 12 years. Like It's usually a lot of stipulations. Or they just say we own to the get that on some Mace Diddy yeah. shit. No, I put the own money it. in. That's like, why I, I said he had your, a good lawyer. Some of the masters, we don't have them all back. Okay. 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 So what, what does a fair situation between an artist and a label look like? Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. We were just talking about that earlier. How? We don't really disagree. It's, it's, um, I think that it looks one way with the, with the label, mm -hmm. with a label, with like a, a regular label that an artist just views as like a corporation, a corporation that they don't associate with a face or a name. Once it's a friendship, a puff and mace type of situation, or uh, uh, Jay Z and Bleak. Yeah, Mason, Fabio type of situation, whatever, whatever a situation is where you're trying to cultivate a friendship as well as a business relationship, I think that's where it gets fuzzy. Like, how do you, how do you, how do you, what's a fair, a fair deal? When I say fair, I'm using that term loosely because in order for it to be fair, it would have to be agreed on both sides over time that this is something fair. What's the scenario that exists where an artist isn't isn't looking at that agreement in retrospect and saying to his or herself, "Damn, what did I sign and why did this person let me sign that? Yeah, why did this person take my master? Hundreds of artists. Did, did they, they have a lawyer here? though? Did and it's they the same thing. Lawyer? Yeah, I mean, that's always the case. They always had a lawyer. They always, but I think the majority of the time, what I'm noticing is it seems like that those artists had a trust for whoever they signed with. They had like a trust. It was different. Just like I kind of, I'm kind of looking at Dre a little bit different from how I would have looked at Jimmy Iovine. You know right. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just a black man thing. You know what I mean? Right. Like maybe, maybe that's just what it is. But um, I don't, I don't know if we can afford the luxury of adopting the same business tactics and ideologies as these big white man labels. I don't know if we have the luxury of, we have the luxury of doing that. Meaning what? Why is that? I'm curious what you. What I mean the mean same, the same business tactics. Meaning you know. Um, Nothing is artist friendly. Everything is business. Nothing mm. personal, but everything is family. While you know, people are hot. Well, while we I mean, because in, in, in retrospect, regardless of whatever the situation is, both parties do benefit. Mm -hmm. Now it's whether one party is benefiting way more, or 
is it is it a balance? Like, what's the balance? Well, one, 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 well, part, one party was putting up way There's more. no balance. Yeah, but I'm saying when you're putting, in mo- but when you're putting, putting up in the money in any business, let's take music out of it. When you're the one putting up the money, you're going to get the bulk of the return because you you're taking to, the majority of yeah, the risk. Because you're, you're taking a you're financial taking risk. risk and it's a money thing. Right. So we're taking a, a risk. It's, it's, it's like, I'm not going to give you, I'm not going to make $100 and I'm taking the risk. I'm giving you 50 No. I'm taking the risk. I'm taking my money back, and then and we'll, then we're gonna gauge yeah. what the split is gonna be from there. And most rappers or singers think it should be 50-50. but then the label comes in and says, "I'm still putting more money into you ongoing, though. It never stops until I drop you, until you leave, right? Until you just cool off completely." Yeah, Kino, I'm gonna need you to speak up because you're not mic'd up. You allow somebody to give you a dollar for your IP, then that's the deal. Yeah. If you feel like your IP is worth ten billion, then that's what you said. We was we just always knew. I think we've had strong people around us too, attorneys. But you can't really value for me. You can't value what is intellectual property. Right. right. I understand the niggas that's writing checks. That's what y'all do. Y'all write checks. Right. Create something. Y'all, rappers, y'all create. I always, I always say, like, that's like the next thing in you know, life. Like, art is like a God tap. God's the only thing that can create something out of just thought and nothing, right? What? Artists do the same thing. You can't value the sun. You can't tell. You can't, you can't come in and be like, what's the moon work? You can, he owns a piece of the moon. Sure, so, I so can. Me, he owns a piece yeah, of the moon. He actually can. He yeah, owns a piece sure. of the moon. real estate on the moon. He owns a piece of the moon. <laughs> Apparently, you can. Yeah. <laughs> when we walk in the room, we already, I think like that automatically, right? Mm-hmm. But I also understand if I buy a painting for $100,000 and that dude blow up and now his painting is worth $10 million, he can't come back and ask me for his painting back because right. I only paid 100000 for it. Like, I bought what I bought. The deal is the deal. Right. You got to know your worth and value versus the deals you set. So if you can't put a price on his talent for me, then I asked you for $10 million and I want it back in two years. And if it's not the right deal for you, that's cool, too. You got the right to say no. Right. But if you agree, then that's a fair deal. A fair deal is where right. everybody Right. Where, where there's a choice. There's no of course, of course, of course, of course, it's fair. But as an artist, and you building a friendship with that person, and that person is more experienced than you are, and that person has a little bit more wherewithal, and can see and can see a little bit more of you than you can see of yourself, and then you end up hitting that spot that you didn't know that you were gonna hit, but that person kind of had the foresight to see that, you're gonna feel a little bit taken advantage of. Well, there's always a chance that you won't hit that spot. Yeah. Then oh yeah, yeah. No, no. Listen, I'm not even saying it to to. to to give pushback and say that I'm siding on either side. I understand both sides. No, this is for the people listening. Yeah, I, just- I understand I understand both sides and that's the reason why I think I'm not um I'm not rushing rushing to 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 be in that position as an as an executive signing just with the with the blockchain web web 3 the, the way this shit is t- t- technology is moving i just don't see i don't see it being so much longer where the label is going to be necessary if you they know? got the money i do yeah. you need I the do. money i do i do but they can borrow millions yeah, and millions they, of they dollars they get way more can. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, we don't, right. we don't so, so, we don't so, have the structure so, i mean if, so, if we so, have the structure then we so can do what it what are the perks of a major label deal as opposed to being independent. The money. That, it's also the phone call. It's also I would the say, call. I would say that I would say the main the mainstream the main stage. The mainstream notoriety. That's mm-hmm. the calls. Yeah, I That's think the calls. um getting on ESPN. Somebody somebody like somebody that. like Russ, somebody like Russ, if you add that element to what he's doing, then he's he's Out superstar on the big stage as opposed to independent superstar. Mm-hmm. But Royce, yeah. what, you said that these contracts aren't artist friendly. You being on both sides, what are some things that could be artist friendly in contracts going forward that you feel should change based on what you've been through since you were in your teenage years? I don't know if I know exactly how to do it yet. That's that's the thing. What are some I'm, things that you feel is just like this never works in the artist's favor that you Yeah, do? I mean if you wanna if you wanna help somebody build build themselves and build their brand, then you wanna put them in a in a position to where they can own what they do. Gotcha. Because they're they're coming to the situation already having ownership. Mm. 
they're, they're signing it away to somebody when somebody comes to them looking to buy into what they're already doing. So what is that worth to you? How much of this are you signing over and how, what is that worth to you? Usually, like the proposals and things that I've been seeing, they, they aren't artist friendly. It's, it's, they're using the bag of money that they have to give to you up front as leverage. And they're hoping they can catch you at a time where you just think you, you need, need cash. You need it. Yeah. And they, they're using it as leverage to, to acquire the possession of the most important part of the whole thing. And that's the asset. It's business. The asset is the music. That's mm -hmm. business. Yeah, right. that's, that's that's business. That's how that right. goes. And, that, and, that, and that's what I was going to say that when us black people, we always tend to think it's about family. Like, we got to get to know each other and we got to hang with each other. And that's when it starts to get personal. Then you start thinking things. Then you start saying things. Then you start feeling personal about this because I spent time with you and I did all this stuff and you should have advised me when, it, when the whole transaction, creative or not, is business. Y'all follow, follow boxing? Yes, yeah, somewhat. Of course. Y'all fam familiar about the scenario when Floyd Mayweather left Bob Arum? Mm-hmm. No, nah, he not paid, he paid. He paid to get out of his contract with Bob Arum. And then he, he got with, 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 Al, with Al, Al Heyman. Heyman. Al Heyman advised him, and he went to the moon. And, and like their motto, just like Golden Boy's business model was starting off, was to do more boxer-friendly deals than everything, than all of the business kind of being like mob mentality and shit. Huh? When you give somebody a better opportunity and more money, they will do better. It's just a yeah, fact. Yeah. It's just a fact. I mean, look how... Depends, well, it may depends it's on not, who you give it to, bro. He's not he's not only he's not only the highest paid fighter of all time, but he's like one bro, of the highest paid athletes of all time. For every Floyd Mayweather, there are millions of boxers who never see the light of day, who fuck up their own thing, who don't train, who don't go running at three in the morning who for no bad reason, investments. who don't eat, who become bad investments. And artists that he, I can see talent a mile away and a dude who's fucking phenomenal. Let him show up drunk to an interview and fuck that up to the point where other people don't want to interview him no more. Let him be late to every appointment. I'm paying his publicist to set up for him and he's late to all of them. Now what happens? My money is flushed and he'll turn around and say that it's my fault. And, and, and a bad fucking Ghost investment. Ghost don't want to hear that. Yeah, Ghost, like, like, well, Ghost just wants everybody to rain down and give everybody money. That's, that's how and go do that's you. How but that kind of that food. kind of behavior that kind of behavior when you're dealing with young talent is it's just par for the course. Mm. It's just yeah. par for the course, and you it, it, it's it's just a responsibility that comes along with it. That's but all. we're not the ones. <laughs> Where? When you say where, who? When, who, I, when, I, when, where? I, when I say where, that's why I stop myself. Uh -huh. Executives, nine times out of ten, aren't the ones bitching. They eat it because this is what comes with it. Everybody knows. You, I, can, I can have these conversations with SO all day. We can go down list. I, list it's the list. Because of these conversations, I don't manage no more. I have no desire Thank to work you. at a label no Thank more. You. When niggas talking to me about music, I'm like, I'm out of it because of these very conversations. Now, how happy I was to leave the source to not have to deal with that kind of element anymore. Like, yo, mm -hmm. these dudes will literally fuck the opportunity up and it becomes your fault. Yeah. And as, as the dude who's in charge, as the dude who saw the talent, listen, I believe in you. You can do this. You can pull this off. You're nice. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing holding you back. And then to watch them get in their own way time and time and time again and tell, tell you to kiss, kiss their ass. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I, the I, talent I, is to know which to pick. You got to know. That's the talent uh, yeah. right there. That's, that's the talent yeah. is to, for that's me to know where if, I, if this is a bad investment for me to make. Bigger, yeah. if, if I'm going to tell you dead ass. If that was, if men... If people, human beings, had that level of foresight, no one would ever get divorced. If you could see coming what was coming, if you knew that this dude was going to do this, and no one signs up to L. No one, no, one, no one volunteers to lose. No one puts a bunch of money in saying, this dude is going to fuck this bag up. I can't wait. Nobody does that ever in the history of anything. You didn't get with your wife knowing she was going to gain... 40 pounds for every yep. year you was with it and That's then like fact. stop fucking and like nobody does that. Like these artists you see, you see the time and I'm, I'm incensed about it because I've danced this dance so many times. I've watched these dudes get in their own way and when they are dedicated to that level of self-destruction, there's damn near no stopping it. That's not 100% right though. What's not 100% right? Yeah, it, it, What's it, not it, there's a lot of different you're, you're circumstances. You're expecting some kids 
most of my kids you got a manager that come from these elements that come from broken homes that's never been taught anything that probably got PTSD that's never seen functioning relationships in their life to get into a billion dollar business and know how to act but no, they, and, and they no, also, and they also, there's also no. I don't, I don't, I don't expect them. Right. I don't expect them to know how to act. I expect them to understand that there's an opportunity in front of you, and the best thing for you to do is listen. How? What do you so, mean how? So let me ask him a question. So what's his job? He's supposed to talk to these blue in the face, to these same people who don't listen, who don't think that they, who don't think that you know what you're talking about, who, who tell you, fuck you, hang up the phone on you, I don't want to do this. You're not going to keep doing that. No, my, no man is going to keep doing it. I'm not doing that from my family. My yeah, family but, don't get to do yeah, that. But how did, so how a young we, nigga that I'm helping, that I'm we, guiding, see, is not see, doing see, that. See, you, know what, you know what the difference between, with, I understand y'all's stances, but when you're an artist, you kind of have the insight. You kind of understand certain things about being an artist and how uh, the complications in someone's life can, can have an effect on that. But it can also have an effect on how good their music is. Well, like, well, well, let me let me ask y'all a yeah. question. How did how did we get here? How did we get to this point that you're making, Mac? Because you're making that you're making a valid point. But how did how did we get here? Like, what's the what are you uh, saying that to say what? He's, you want me to? I, I think we were talking about that. We were talking about the money. what's fair. Oh yeah, what's, what's fair, fair deal. for a label? I think makers represent the the risk that a business That's takes. That's exactly where it was mm -hmm. doing business with someone. Who's never done business before, well, Matt, yeah. or possibly has never done business at that level? Can I ask you, level? Roy, something? As artists who's done millions of views, sold records, and y'all all started young. When did y'all start listening? Great at question. At what age? Yeah. I mean, what, no, not even what age. Just when. But what made you start? I've, listening? I've always, I've always listened, but I, I wasn't always necessarily as good as applying what I what I heard mm. or or you know like really it really resonated with me enough to change my ways. People told me for a long time that I need to stop drinking and I even drink for a long time knowing I need to eventually stop drinking. I got a question for y'all. If you D and Y from the Rough Riders and you you see a young DMX and you know that he has a drug problem, do you not sign him because he has a drug problem? It depends on what, uh, what, what, what level. That's a great what's question. More, what, what's more problematic than that? At what level? Because I mean, let's let's be real. X X, he couldn't. Have, it, 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 it was no way, rest in peace, that he could have been just crazy or or, or or crashing or you know what I mean, out of his wits all the time. When they first got him, he wasn't like that. This is what I'm saying. He wasn't but like you, that. But you, once you, this this person who's never had this amount of money. And it, it happens to everybody. Once you get to a certain level, you got all this bread. You got all this, you got access to anything. He no was one cutting, tells he, you that's no. when the inhibitions he was cutting, start to he was pop cutting, up. He was cutting his vocals to where my dog's at with his, with his jaw wired up. He had just got... He, as I said, he said he used to like, he he left a show where he got paid and robbed the nigga. Yeah, this, but, this is New York. You, you also got the show. He left the show and got paid and robbed the nigga. Now we full of some new shit. Now we talking about we talking about we talking about one of the greatest artists that we've ever seen. Yeah, but nobody asked in music. Nobody asked these artists to be great businessmen. If it wasn't for people like Dre, Jay, and the ones who stand out, who made great business decisions, we would never expect artists to be like that. No, I'm just talk I'm just talking about to add to Mecca's what point. What about Ray Charles? It ain't like he's the first dude. Yeah, so right. What about like? What we talking about? Like hip hop. Great artist, right. businessman. Right. Throughout the history of music. Who was a junkie? How about this though? Being a businessman. Who was a junkie? Ray, Ray Charles, Charles was a yeah. Ray Charles yeah, yeah. was a junkie. And I expect them, and I do expect a singer or a rapper. I do expect them to be smart, because that's what I look at. I don't smart. think so. If you know, if you're not, if you don't know something, surround yourself with people who know. Let that. me say this: smartest thing we, we you can do. We forget the stigma in hip hop. Being a smart businessman was looked down upon at a certain point. Think about MC Hammer when he was diversifying everything. They called him a sellout. Yeah. And that's the blueprint of every artist right now, and we call them a sellout. Man, no, to say we're not smart, we came to the record industry, we created a culture that... I didn't say we're not smart, though. I just got to be precise. Right. I, I didn't say that we're not smart. I just, because I got to be precise on so, this camera. <laughs> we also created our own clothing lines. We changed fashion. What? We changed videos. We changed the entire world. 
I don't know too many basketball players other than Michael Jordan who's buying their own teams, who's creating their own fashion lines right. on the level that we did. So to say, I think we're the biggest trendsetters Absolutely. out of any form of entertainment that's touched. Right. Right? There's only one Tyler Perry. There's only one Oprah. They, and they do it or not, but we got multiple people in hip-hop who's, who's done it and for years. Right. So I think... I think we gotta start giving each other more credit for. If you if yeah. you should if you should ignite, do you not get Tupac out of jail when mm. he was in there for yeah. rape? What 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 habit does he have that's going to be detrimental to the creation of the music, the, and, and is going to fuck up the money? And that's a calculated risk because if he it, I hate saying this. Rest in peace, Pac. If he actually is a rapist, which we in this room don't believe you, if right. he actually is a rapist, then you get him out of jail. He raped somebody else. Now that's your fault. You got him out and he did it again. If if the dude is an alcoholic, you Juan D D and Wild were all they were all kids. They weren't that much young older than DMX when they put him when they put him out. They didn't have the foresight to know that his little itty bitty problem right now that he's using to cope with such a fucking difficult life is going to expand. Now that we've made his life easier, easier. who thinks that? Uh, well, to uh, me, anybody some, somebody think like that. me, somebody like, think that? Think that. somebody like me looks at that, and what that tells me, what that teaches me, is that we have a whole lot of um, things within us, within us that could be problematic, Dang. and not but, not, but not even anyone, just detrimental right? to business, but in Pac's case, detrimental to my own life. I have I have things within me. I have certain decision making little qualms about me that can put me in bad situations. Like that's it's not it's not it's like not that straw, you know it's like not that, that you know I'm a I'm a I'm a rape, I'm a rapist or I'm a, I'm a rapist or something like that. It's the situations that I put myself in right. to be looked at that way. You know, going and kicking on kicking on gang members at the at the casino and Right. Drinking Hennessy in Oakland at a at a house party. Proof is at a was at a after hour party. Spot, yeah. We all have all of that shit within us. I right. remember when you broke your arm. Yeah. And had to go to the hospital in the middle of like what were you on tour? Mm -hmm. When that he was on tour. How do you do that? Weightlifting. Arm, arm wrestling. Arm wrestling. A, a fucking bodybuilder broke his arm. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, it's fucking animal. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We got to talk about the rocket launcher. Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. no. We, 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 we get to that. We get to yeah. that. Yeah. But I, who was the weightlifter? Who was the? With, you just saw this guy and was like, I could take a white boy in Germany. He, he asked me. We, we were in Norway. Norway. He Norway. asked me. He asked me. He asked me to. He asked me to arm wrestle, so we arm wrestled. We arm wrestled with the with the right hand. I beat him, and then he wanted to go with the left hand for whatever reason. And I, he was I agreed. I agreed to it. No, he wasn't left handed because we went with the right hand first. I agreed to it, but I was I agreed to it because I was drunk. I and it, I it was some was girls there. That. He challenged me in front of some girls. Mm. So when we went with the left arm, I wanted to beat him the same way that I beat him with the right arm. So it was like what happened was, they said go, and I had him. I had him down like this, and he somehow ended up at this, at this kind of angle where he's pulling straight up. Right. But I'm on an angle where I'm trying yeah. to push him down, and I'm trying to snap him down. Right. Bop, and it just popped like that. Wow. It popped. It was a spiral fracture. This bone right here. Wow. Mm. What did the girl say? I think they came to the hospital with us. <laughs> <laughs> so that worked out. So it worked out. It took care. I mean, you know, if you yeah. if you want to look for the silver lining in it, you know, I'm 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 optimist. I'm optimist. But if I'm if I'm if I'm promoting that show, <laughs> right? And, and I, I done spent all this money, and we done done all this promo, and you hear about the <laughs> main artist that you got, you broke your arm doing what? Right. You didn't fall off the stage. You didn't get in a car accident. You with some white boy in Norway. In Norway. For no fucking reason. You already won, and now you broke your arm, and now I gotta sit, like, now you're in a hot. I went, well, to, I went to jail right in the middle of my career for a year for, for drinking and driving. And who sees that coming? That's my whole point. Who saw and, that coming? That the, the, person that's, do, the person do. that's with you every day. The person that's with you every day. And I, from what I've met, what I've seen, but you know, through my, my walks through the in industry, is that a lot of these artists are surrounded by enablers or people that's there to get something out of it, and they'll, you know, they're not gonna say nothing when shit is going wrong because 
they don't want to upset this person and not be in that position. Well, well depending on what that is, I think the lines the, the line kind of gets fuzzy. If you're talking about addiction, then you're talking about something totally different. If I'm an addict, so if you come around me and you're saying things about my addiction, it's just going it's just going to create it's going to cause distance between me and you. Right. Because mm -hmm. If I'm not ready to get better, then I only want enablers around. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to feel yeah, bad so you're gonna about a problem it. that I already have. Right. It's, mm -hmm. it's not something. That's why I hated the way that people talked about X after he died. It was like people mm -hmm. was around him. They knew that he was struggling. They knew that he was fighting. They knew that he was fighting his demons. Well, of course they did. But addiction is not something that somebody can fix you. It's, it's one of those things where you have to. With me, I, I got to a point where I was just tired of it. I was just tired of everything that came along with, with being drunk all the time. But what, what, did, what did that look like? Which part? Like, what, what were the, okay, I, I, I did this, I did this, I did, because it, it had to stack up eventually where you were the, like. The bad stuff? I can't, yeah. yeah. What, what, what was the things that stacked? Going to jail, um, getting in a few serious beasts as a result of me just feeling like, I was I was drunk all the time, so I, I I wasn't in a clear mind frame enough enough at the time because I know if I was, I would have been able to talk m my way through things with the right people. If I if I could have just been the regular cool just guy that I am when I'm sober and not tripping about shit all the time and not worrying about shit all the time and not being on edge all the time. I could have prevented so much dumb shit from happening to well, so many well, people. Well, what, what happened to the mornings? The mornings? The mornings, where you wake up the next day like, oh shit, I did that last night? That was every morning. But you was drinking, right? But, but was you drinking for breakfast too? Sometimes. Sometimes. Speaking of enabling, what would, what would that be like with you and Marshall, with M? Was he like saying, it's gonna be cool Royce? You'll get through it, or were y'all fighting back and forth? Oh, oh, oh were y'all you, both kind of fighting y'all own demons at the same well, time? Because he, he was dealing with He also too. had to, yeah, and check, and check himself in the rehab a couple like, times. Early in the beginning, in the beginning, we neither one of us was to that point yet. I took my first drink around Dr. Dre at 21 years old. You know, Marshall was all, Marshall was always doing pills around me, but I never looked at it like it was problematic. Right. And for the record, me and Marshall never. <laughs> but not until not until recently, we never had even a spat, no disagreements, mm. ever, ever. Mm -hmm. Well, not until recently. Well, you know, like we don't we don't agree with each other on everything. You know what I'm saying? Like we right. grown, we grown men now. You know, back then I just I just kind of looked at him like a big brother. I mean, I still do. Right. You know what I mean? But it was there wasn't really many scenarios. He's not like the preaching type. You right. know what I mean? Like he's not the type. Yo, you got to stop this, or you got to stop that. Like right. one thing he he said to me after we got cool, after we went years without talking, he said, uh, he said, yo, you know, if you ever feel like you got a problem, you can you can call me, right? Mm. And he just kind of planted the seed like that, like right. but never, never, never would he call me and be like, yo, I think you tripping. You need to do this. You need to do that. I I would never do that right. to anybody. I just don't think that's a good approach. Well, was there any times that you was around him and you felt like yo, this pill popping thing is kind of crazy? Him, his, yeah. No. Were you an enabler? Does that make you an enabler? I don't think so. Did you enable him Were you popping pills with him? No. Oh, well, during the ecstasy era, yeah. absolutely. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you spoke about that was just doing that. X. It was just well, like, it was like, I popped ecstasy too, well, bro. X was just the thing. Everybody no. was just, it's, yeah, it's time. It's that's the word, yo, beautifulness. Yo, yo, <laughs> we, we, we are not encouraging any, anybody to do drugs. <laughs> bleep this guy, man. Like, come oh, on. Yeah, man. Man. Hey, man. yo, listen, I got one. Hey, that's so bleep. That's, club. that's something to get out of your way when you're in your 20s, 20s yeah, and 30s. Fair. Or how yeah. about you just skip it all together? Like, no. That's a you good yeah, like, man, you never took a drink, ever. Never. And I've tried to get I, him I to like, take you, shots and celebrate and all that. but That's an enabler. How? Oh, How? Oh, you just you just said oh, I tried. How? Because he doesn't have a but he doesn't have a problem. He's just never done it. Yeah. But but so what if you what path. if you try what if you try to get him to do it and he says okay just to, just because he wants to you know feel feel like y'all ha y'all have a connection right and then that creates he ends that ends up turning into a problem for him down the line that he didn't know he didn't know that he was wired that way 
Uh, that would make you a, fo- a, a form of an innate. No, that's how you look at, at 21, not right? A, yeah, I can't yeah. get blamed for that. I didn't say blame. Yeah, no, no. Sound like you're the like A&R now, now man. Getting blamed for the project. Listen, man. Listen. Get blamed for the project. He got blamed for the project. He got blamed for the I don't know blame for the artist. Listen. I don't know blame for the artist. I get it. I get it. I get it. I, I, I think y'all got me confused on what side I be sitting on. Man. No, I, was not, I used to no. drop off packs, bro. I no, wasn't. I you, yo, you feel no, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You get what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You know how that yeah, shit but, but nah, if, I, if he took a drink and he decides to be an alcoholic, that's yeah. your fault, bro. That ain't, that ain't wow. mine. Wow. Because yeah, where there's a reason. choice, there are no, no victims. victims right? My nigga, you chose. It's I, on you, I asked, bro. I asked Royce. I don't think it makes actually, him a it makes him a victim, but it makes you an enabler. But it doesn't make it your fault. I, I feel like mm. an enabler is someone who sees, oh, oh, this he's he's really fucking everything up. But you know, eh, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go buy this this beer that he just asked for. I'm gonna go get this bottle of champagne for him. That's an enabler. Me but just not, getting him to take a shot. You feel like you feel like it's your it's your job to police your friends. Um, if you care. Enough. I'm not saying it's your job to do it to the point where it becomes a burden on you. Because I've had friends get drunk around me, and I'll be like, yo, bro, you got to drink this water. They'd be like, no, nah, I'm good. Now we have a problem. But they if you can't recognize that you fucked up, you can't be around me. Yeah, you so got to go. Yeah, so you know what it's, I mean? your, it's your choice. It's your choice to choose, you know, rather to be around that person or not. No, I, I, I kick, kick niggas out. They've been <laughs> friends. Now, I haven't spoken to them since mm-hmm. because I'm not like. We all have goals. We all have things that we want to do with our lives, and there's certain habits that's detrimental to that shit. Mm-hmm. And if that's something you can't recognize, like yo, I have a problem with this. Yeah, so you making that you making that choice based off of you not wanting them to fuck your shit up. You're not yeah, making not, it because you, care, so you, you care that they have a problem. Not just my shit up, but I, you, you might get me involved in some shit. You know what I'm saying? Or, or you, I don't want to watch you fuck your shit up. I don't mm-hmm. want to sit there because I've, I've been there mm-hmm. trying to help a friend, trying to help a friend. Yo, come on, bro. You got to da 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 And to a certain extent, they become dependent on you being that voice, mm-hmm. but it doesn't mean they're going to change. Right. That's After self, a while, that's it's just the same soap opera. That's called self-care. Yeah. And people from a distance look at that and they, they call you an enabler of sorts because they assume that you're just you're just there. But you removed yourself from it a long time ago. You stand in, in, a, in a far enough proximity from that person to, to protect yourself. Not but, only that, but sometimes it takes for someone to lose somebody close to them. Get them closer before to Before they're like, mm-hmm. you know what? I really need to stop. This mm-hmm. nigga gave up on me? Oh, man, right. what am I doing? Mm-hmm. Once, once this... Mm-hmm. Yo, this is, yo, he always been there, always kept it 100 with me. Damn, why would he just, maybe I Damn, do have it, a yeah. problem. Yeah, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's why, when that that's, person why, up- that's why interventions are such roll, rolls of the dice. The intervention is basically an ultimatum. Did you, basic- ha- did you have an intervention? No, no intervention? nobody gave me an intervention. Uh-huh. But, but if my mom, if my mom and, the, and everybody else that I care about would have set, would have set me down, would have set me down all together and told me, you know, like, we need you to go get treatment or you lose us. I would have went and got treatment for them. Right. But I would have relapsed because yeah, I, was I wasn't say, would ready. It, would it have hold, would it have held? Right. Yeah, I love you know, I love I love people enough to where, you know, I'm I'm willing to attempt to get better if if, if you know if it'd show them how much that I love them. But I also understand that people that do those interventions don't really understand addiction that much. And they're they're basically put in a position to where they have to they have to make a decision. Yeah, because I could see an intervention pushing someone to go get high or go get drunk. Yeah. You got a room full of people telling like coming down on you. You know what I'm saying? Depression. And some people yeah. some people go to treatment and then that thing clicks in their mind, like, holy shit. Mm. I've been sober long enough. I'm I'm starting to see I'm starting to see the light now. And then they they fly straight. But if you in the record business <laughs> I asked you to quit drinking once. Do you remember that? Of course not. Of course not. I asked him, like, SOBs, I don't remember what year it was, backstage, downstairs. Mm-hmm. And just cracking it, like, I was halfway joking, but halfway not. Because he used to get bottles of Patron. And they'd be, like, the full big mm. ones. And he used to, like, down them. And I and remember, you would just sit there and watch. I, I did not sit there, but I remember coming back Enabler. through. I remember, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 record label. I, now I remember coming back through and he had a, another bottle. 
and I don't remember him sharing it with anybody. And I remember walking up to him, like we was always been, and I, I just remember saying to him, like, yo, bro, you gotta, you gotta chill. Like, and well, I, what'd he I was, say? what he say to you? He looked me dead in the face and he was like, what, you think I got a problem? And I was like, I'm not saying Ooh, that. Defense. I'm just saying like, defense. you gotta chill. Defense. And he looked me dead Detroit. in the face and say, I ain't, he said, I don't have an addiction. I got a gift. Well, he said, I don't have a problem. I have a gift. Some, some, some slick shit, some slick rap <laughs> shit like that. Who was yeah. around when he said this? It was, not, it was a bunch of some motherfuckers, but it was a crowded, was, you know, SOBs yeah. down yeah, there. It was down a crowded there. fucking room. Right. And everybody was trying to like take a picture and chop it up. Well, I I was, you said like, that in front of a room full no, of people. I said, but I said, it no, where, no, no. I said it where he could hear me because it was happening in the moment. And I didn't want, I was like, yo, bro, you got to like. So you whispered this it in his, hold on, hold on. Yeah, but your opinion is not valid because you don't drink. Because I don't drink. That's how a lot of niggas dismiss me when I say shit like that. Yeah, You basically went to Amsterdam to the red light district to the whorehouse and said, stop fucking. That's what I'm talking about. Why are you fucking? No. Did you whisper it in his ear? In that instance, in that instance, that's me trying to at least toss condoms to niggas. Like, you're going to be doing it, but there was... I just wanted you to... Did that teach you lesson to mind your business? In that one, yes. Yes. He basically told me Mind my business. There you go. And my thing, that, my thing. No, I didn't. I didn't mind take it as. Your I didn't take it as mind my business. I took it as. I don't. I don't have the words that's gonna make this thing happen. So I'm a mind my business. But you, but you did it. You said that to me because why? Because I care. thought you, I thought you were hurting yourself. Okay. It and looked um, like you were hurting yourself. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere. Yeah. So at that time, mm. you were a, a journalist, correct? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Okay, because I've been around a lot of journalists because I've had to do interviews at venues and stuff, and none of the white journalists ever said that to me. So why do you think, what is it about me that you think made you care more than you would probably normally care? You really like the music. You're black. No, Aside from you. <laughs> I, I You're know black. where you're going with this. Do you think that there's, there's, there's a bit of an emotional connection that we have as black men? I, 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 I hear what you're saying. But nah, white friends, they... they <laughs> he's not, he's not white wrong. Not, I didn't say white friends. No, 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 listen to this. Let's play this out. No, right. I didn't say white out. friends. I'm talking about what, what, what was it? At that it? point, were you guys friends? Because he didn't have to care. Right. I, I considered us cool. Maybe not friends. I considered us good associates. Every time I saw him, it was always good vibes. Right. And I... I but I, if he was getting jumped, you wouldn't jump in. You'd just be like, oh, yeah, shit. I, yeah. I like to fight, so... All right. <laughs> but that, that's neither here nor there. I, right. I did it because... Um, Shit, I never really thought about that. Well, number one, I hate. I, I would hate the opp- I would hate to see you fuck up. I've always been. I had always been a fan of your music. Mm-hmm. So the idea of us losing another talent to preventable bullshit, like I'm a big fan of Jimi Hendrix. Jimi mm-hmm. Hendrix, one of the things is he drank himself to death. I've never been happy about that. And I've always said like, if if I don't say anything, and it just happens. And I didn't have the opportunity. I had the opportunity. I ain't say shit. How much of that, like, how much of my conscience is going to be eaten up by that? And then number two, like I said, you were cool. I didn't want to see you. I didn't. Ne- I never want to see nobody doing it to themselves. So why don't that same? Why don't that yep. same thing apply to Dr. Dre? That's where he's. I, I no, felt that. because Dr. Dre. He was so what, it did, what, it did, at that time. What, what would you oh, think? Shit, maybe it did. Mm-hmm. That's was, what he's talking about. No, no, no. About. I was going to say it, it, it wouldn't. It wouldn't hurt me. Dr. Dre would be hurt financially if he invested in you He's and you fucked business. the bag up. However, I just said that I would have been affected as far as my conscience was concerned. If so why would Dre be affected? Because Dr. Dre was business. Because Dr. Dre was looking yeah, it wasn't, at him it as wasn't a business. a scenario where I did something where I did something where he felt like I could fuck the bag up. He was offering me a bag. I, I was trying not to take the bag to go take another bag somewhere. To else. go take a bigger bag. Why would he let me do that? Maybe he well, Because like you're going to take, you getting 750 nah, more thousand nah, dollars. Nah, nah, listen, yeah. hold on, hold on, hold no. on, hold on. First of all, we're talking about a man that was in a legendary group that fell apart because of business. That's a fact. Like, that's a fact. He knew, NWA he, that, that, that went that left might, off the strength. Can we, can we, can we you know all agree here that, that Dre knew what the best decision was? No. Uh, you don't no. think you don't feel like that? No. You're I'm right. Not, no, because you don't know the future. No, I, he I didn't know the future. I don't, I don't know Dre, but based on what Esso said, and Esso knows my personality, and I could sympathize with Dre on this. If you and I are rocking, and you even tell me 
someone else is hitting you and you're considering That's it. the problem. No, 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 no. Listen to me. Mm -hmm. I ain't saying shit. That's so no. He already know. I cut that nigga off. He know I did too. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not... And Royce, that's kind of fucked up, but that's probably how Dre processed things in his mind. He felt... He probably felt mad and, at and was point. And was well within his right to. Didn't Nas do the same thing with nature? With, with nature. nature. We had that whole and conversation. And was well within his right to. So the conversation that we're having mm. is at what point does mentorship play a role here and how important is that? Am I your mentor or are you just asking me a bunch of questions? Well, no, why don't you... No, no you're, somebody, you're somebody who... Um, you, you're looking at me and you, we have a different connection than, than I would have with, with Tommy Boy Records. Are you what, what, for, okay. from, my, for, mm -hmm. from my perspective, we building a connection. I flew mm -hmm. you out. Mm -hmm. We've been working. If that's really a connection, you never would have came to me with that conversation. Mm -hmm. The connection would have had the value that would have that, that, that would have surpassed the monetary, uh, yeah, uh, um, yeah. Okay, so you know now, now, now we basically saying, now we're basically, are we teaching? Are we teaching the twenty year old the right thing to do, or are we punishing the twenty year old for not knowing? I the don't right think thing it's a do? punishment because the twenty year old kind of made at, me feel like let's look at the let's look at the punishment or is it a punishment or is it a consequence? Let's hear this. Let's hear this. Is it a punishment or is it a consequence? Let's call it. Let's call it. a consequence. Let's let's not even use semantics. That sounds like a Let's call it a consequence if that feels better. Right. When we when we raise our kids, when we we raise our kids, we come up a certain way. Our kids come up a different way. Do we punish them? for everything that they do where we just assume that they would know better no, that we, we no, know we, we didn't teach them. No, no we, we, we don't. No, you, but, but you don't, you also don't look to negate their consequences from their actions. You don't look to take away the consequences of what happened. Right. Like, you don't punish them for not, if, if a kid touches a stove and you never told him it was hot, you don't, you don't punish him because he touched the stove, but your hand's still gonna burn, bro. Like, you, you, this is what yeah, happens. You, some some, I, I some those lessons are involved. I know, but we're dealing with I, I, okay, okay, so of dollars. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe that's, that circles back to the point that I was making where we don't, I don't know how much of the luck, how much we're at luxury to be able to take that position all of the time in this business. Because there, every other group of people in every walk of life are Further basically ahead. prepping people. They're prepping their kids and they're playing musical chairs with these high executive seats and are making the most important decisions, pertinent decisions in, in black culture, in our culture. And every time we build something together, it collapses. We fall apart. We fall apart and, and the solidarity is never there. And, uh, and, and, and that's well, yeah. a large part of that is because we're not sharing the information with each other. We're too self-absorbed. We're too in our own heads. And when I talk about people like Dre, it's he he comes from and is a product of the same scenarios and environments that the, the young kids that you're talking about are from. Right. He made a lot of those same mistakes, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And it was because of his lack of information. We coming into a business where there's no handbook for it. There's no school that you can go to. Everything that you're learning is through trial and error. So instead of the the people who came before you, you know, like your predecessors and shit, instead of them kind of embracing and teaching, there's more competing. But you can't, gonna, you, can't, you can't really go there, bro, because we're talking about someone who has a history of failed partnerships. Yeah, no, no, but see, but see, I don't so, want so you to, why, why, I don't want you to, point, I don't why, want am you to I, why am I trying to, trying to do the same thing I did before that fell apart. Yeah, yeah, but you, but see, what you're what you're saying is implying that I don't understand his position. I don't want y'all to think I don't understand his position. Don't conflate everything that I'm saying. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm creating scenarios. I'm using Dr. Dre as an example because that's a situation that I could speak about knowledgeably. Okay. Because I was in that situation. But like I said, that situation is not a regret. I don't harbor any resentment mm -hmm. toward mm -hmm. Dre. Right. I love Dre. I don't right. feel like he wronged me in any way. I just feel like if we're talking about what the best decision was, in retrospect, the best decision would have been for me to stay with Dr. Dre because I, I knew that he was about to create a dynasty and he was about to shift the world and he was about to change the way the music was consumed 
forever. So why? sonically. So you shouldn't have left. So, so why I did shouldn't you? have left. So I shouldn't have left. So that wasn't the best decision. Doesn't right. mean that if I had stayed, that I would have made the right decisions. Right. That's you might have stayed. Saying, saying, you might have stayed. Might have been like but, no disrespect. Go be trice. But but yeah. But what I'm saying is what I'm saying is through mentorship, through mentorship, better decisions get made. And and when you when you take a little bit of an extra of an extra step and it are, is a little bit more intentional with just making sure that you share information and kind of protect the youth from, from, from doing dumb shit as much as you can. I'm right. going to tell you exactly why then I you're think we create dumb. more superstars. Just, I'm, I'm going to tell I you exactly baby, why think, your example. Before, before you make yeah, your point, go, man. Go, go, go. I think Baby from Cash Money, I think his, 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 his goal, one of his goals in life was to make Wheezy a millionaire, was to make him a superstar. That was one of his goals. It wasn't to do business with Wheezy and then Wheezy get rich while he get rich. No, he had a vision in his mind. I want to make him a superstar. I want my son to be on top of the world. Mm -hmm. right. And he succeeded at doing that. There's no record label out there that has that kind of a vision with a young black man. That's not what their goal and intention is at all. Right. The same, it's the same ending. Yeah, we all want to get rich. You're going to stand next to that label and you're going to get rich. But they're not looking at you and having that kind of emotional connection to you because their fulfillment comes in making money off of you. Baby's fulfillment came in watching Wayne blow the fuck up and become a millionaire. I think Dre's fulfillment of watching Snoop and Dre's fulfillment of watching Marshall and Dre's fulfillment of watching 50 is different from the fulfillment that Jimmy Iovine got. I just feel that. I agree. And, and it, it goes back to the point that you were making where you felt the need to speak up and, and at least plant a seed to me. Yo, man, I don't want to see you fuck up. You know what I mean? And you only care because you're looking at another black man. You're looking at another black man. We have an emotional connection to one another. Right. It's not always just business with us. What I'm saying is, why don't we embrace that more? Embrace that more through mentorship and stop always pointing out. Uh, the propensity that we have to fuck shit up because the other we already side, know that the, we have that. The other side of it, the other side of it is, had I said that to you that night, and you'd have said something loud that embarrassed me, I'd have walked away like fuck that nigga. You wishing you wouldn't have said nothing. There's one, two. Had Dr. Dre come up in the information age today, where he thinks he knows everything. And you, you come up in the information age, you go to talk to Dr. Dre, and you think you know everything. And you start telling him numbers back. Let me get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> I got artists right now, right now, when I believed in them to the point that I did, and they gave me their ass to kiss and got mad because I stopped, and they want to know why I don't call them anymore. It's because you broke my heart, bro. Because every time I've told you what needs to happen, you gave me your ass to kiss. On the other side of the of the mentor mentee relationship, mm -hmm. is the mentor who believes in you to the point where he's going all in, and you break his heart. Like you don't come, Esso don't didn't come back from all the people who broke his heart, getting personally involved with it because yeah, you so have a stake in their in their success. And, 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 and can I say this one thing? Nah, in the hindsight. The, no, nah, don't, don't, you can't really turn to me because I look at shit like it all happened for a reason. And because of all this shit, I'm now wiser and smarter and I make better decisions. No, so, I'm yeah. not, I'm not, I wasn't, I wasn't going to go in that so, direction. So I'm we, talking about math is, is so, a success story of somebody who might have, if anybody managed him or anybody had a hand, Clark Kent was here sitting in that exact same seat. Clark Kent couldn't have been more proud of dude. Mm -hmm. Couldn't have been more proud. Awesome. Pulled OG. up Shout just because he was proud. Shout out to Clark Kent. Right. Then Clark Kent don't do shit with nobody. Came through here because of how proud he was from math going from math to math hoffa. That's the positive side of a mint. You, I could see, right. yo, bro, when I tell you, sitting where I was sitting watching Clark Kent like just get so full, I was, I was damn near like as close as you can get to jealous. I want that moment. I've wanted that moment for so many artists that I've dealt with right. and I've watched them fuck it up and couldn't stop nothing and then they turn around and ask me how are they come dead? 
It's, no, it, and it's no, they're not dead. I, so you see, the it's, story it's ain't over. It's it might be but dead, it, it ain't over. Because there's a lot of people that, that could be like, yeah, I went to math, nah, and math dead, was like, man, fuck you, man. Listen, nah, 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 nah. listen, in the context, I've been in there. the context of mentorship, it, mm-hmm. it's it's heartbreaking when it doesn't when it doesn't work out. Yeah, right. You know, it's a two way street, and it's a responsibility. But it's one of those things that you can't allow you can't allow the bad things that that will will come from it. It's just par for the course. I'm right. still at you, it. You can't, yeah, you can't allow the bad things to come from it to change you into one of the bad people. I'm still at it. But you're in the streets and you got the bag and you give somebody the bag in good faith and they run off on you. You don't become the person who runs off on people. Nah, right. I'm still you at know it. what I mean? Like if you a stand up guy, you just a stand up guy. Shout out if to you, Petty. If, shout if out you, to O'Henny Savant. If you, shout yeah, out if you, to if you, Shaw Summers. If you in the streets and you doing crime, you know, like and you go down, somebody snitch on you, you do some time and you come back out and you feel like I stood on business. You don't turn around and become a rat. And yeah. use that as an excuse. Right. Right. Yo, these niggas be ratting. I'm tired of that shit. What, what's what's going to happen when a nigga rat on me? You know what I'm saying? Like, right. it's just one of those things. You stand on, on it or you don't. Right. But I think it has to be the people who have, who have enough foresight to understand that when you have somebody that's young and talented, you, they're usually always going to be high risk. So, you know, you, you, you're going to be taking a chance on them, you know, like in life as individuals, you know, at with your relationship and in business and at what point do we at, when do we stop just giving up on the, on the next generation because they're doing stupid shit and because we grew from doing stupid shit and we don't really remember that well how stupid we used to be right because we evolved but when I, do we stop because it's about understanding right when do we stop like when T Grizzly made the comments that he made about me and about Marshall and Sada was saying the shit that he was saying about Sada, right. yo man, we could have been, we were well within our right to give them pushback, to dispute it, to argue, to tell them they not right. We knew that they weren't right, but we also, I also knew that they, it wasn't coming from a fucked up place. It was just coming from a place of, for lack of a better term, ignorance. Right. It was coming from a place of them being brand new, them being left to their assumptions because right. they don't see us pulling up a whole lot. So they're assuming that we think in a certain way. They're assuming. So to me, it's our job as OGs to, to, to make that better. Right to take the steps to instruct them, to advise them, and to make them feel embraced. It's our job to do the embracing. You know what I'm saying? Like, just like the situation that just happened with Conway and Flex. Yo, that's a Flex problem, period. Like, Conway may not have handled it the greatest, but Conway handled it how new artists handle shit. You know what I mean? So yeah. when do we stop punishing people for, for crying out, well, if I, like, for if crying I, out or, or, or expressing the issues that they have, I got because two. along with along with that legendary status comes a responsibility. I got I got two things to to, to say about that. One, um, Flex reached out to Conway. I guess they you know he sent him a beat, but uh, in his defense, and he dropped bombs on it, played it on the radio, and all that stuff. So they good. When I spoke to good. Conway, he said we good. That's beautiful. You know what I mean? So shout out to Flex for that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the other thing that we're having this, this conversation about young talent, but a lot of the, the things that, that they need mentorship, mentorship on are kind of things that when you become an adult, you don't think that way anymore. So why aren't there more artists that's mature being put out there? Why aren't we, why aren't we picking up artists that's like dumb nice and like 40 something and and pushing that out you know what i'm saying why aren't we working with people who know better than this shit well be- why because that, because why isn't that happening because what conway did it doesn't hurt anybody you know what i mean like it doesn't hurt flex's position you know what i mean like when flex starts to go public and defend his position it's just an unnecessary thing to do in my opinion in my opinion, somebody like Flex, he has an unfuckwittable position. You can't remove him from anything. You can't right. fire him from anything. He's Funk Master Flex. Right. Along with that title comes a responsibility. You have a responsibility to the people who come after you. you we can't keep just keep calling each other OGs just because we've been in the game for a lengthy amount of time. That's something that has to be earned over time. You right. know, and And along with earning that title in that position you have to be more understanding you know what i'm saying like you have to understand where that person is coming from and you got to be willing to brush a few things off 
And when you embrace them, like how I embraced T Grizzly, T Grizzly went off on me. But when I got him on the phone, it was like I was talking to my long lost cousin from Detroit. Because when you embrace people and you understand their position, you dis that's disarming because they armed and they ready for combat because right. they th that's what they think this shit is. They think everybody is their enemy. They think every OG is against them. Every OG who not every OG DJ who not playing their shit. Oh man, y'all niggas is against us. You know, and it's, it's like Flex has a responsibility too. He in a tough position too, having to delegate all of that shit. But that's what being a legend is. That's what the job is. That's what it entails. And you can do it. Mm. He can do it however he wants to do it. That's his right too. Right. I can't. I, I I I can't judge him on that because right. I'm always just gonna look at him like what he is, an OG fucking legend icon. Right. Nothing he ever do it can change that. But when I look at those kinds of scenarios, I just think of who who it affects when these scenarios occur. It affects us. You know what I mean? When Griselda, niggas who came from the mud in Buffalo, and Buffalo didn't even really exist in the music industry s since fucking Rick James. They come out of the mud in Buffalo at a time where everybody is singing, dancing, and fucking doing, you know, drill rap or whatever. Right. And they come with this vintage Wu-Tang kind of fucking, you know, hybrid sound of just refreshing ass niggas. Right. And they just go on a run. Like if I'm flex, I. I don't have to like it. Like, if I don't like it, the least I'm going to do is make sure that I don't get on public platforms and, and go out of my way to say why I don't like it. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I would understand the importance of why it's important that they exist and why it's important that they get support mm -hmm. from the OGs. He may not be able to play everything on his show that they do. But when they when they cry out like that, I keep saying cry out, when they, when they express themselves in a brazen type of fashion like that, mm -hmm. I just think that's an opportunity for a guy like Flex to reach out. How many shots are OGs and that's obligated to take? Yeah, because after a while, it's like, come on now. Y'all just don't understand what's going on. We'll look I have at, a two-hour we'll conversation. We'll look at Hove, oh, man. Oh. Hove is like Jesus hanging from the fucking cross, being stoned every day. Yo, man, that's what that's the price you pay to be Hove, bro. I'm not talking about Hove. Yeah, I'm talking that, about... Well, yeah, I'm talking about when, when, when you say OGs, yeah. I took it to the top of the food chain. Okay, Why not? so work, because work your way down, because all some of us... Hov has had those moments that you're talking about that still make it worth it. Dr. Dre has had those moments you spoke on that make it worth it. Marshall 50, uh, he's had M, he's, he, I mean M 50 Snoop. He's had those moments that make it worth it. As an OG, how many times do you hear from the same person constant nonstop attacks to the point where you don't pick the phone up no more? Like when, when, when is enough enough? Because yeah, I, hear, I hear the responsibility on this end, and I, I, I embrace that. I get that. Right. Mm -hmm. Got some silvers in my chin. I'm supposed to do that. I get that. Yeah. How many times before? Nah. Yeah, to quote Nas on Woo, from the, Woo for the Children, he said that brother that you think has a whole lot of pull probably all, already tried to pull his brothers up and got betrayed, got played, got... Now nah, he balances yeah. challenges mm -hmm. trying to keep his self-paid. Self Mm -hmm. Like, it's not these guys' responsibility. No, no. We don't have to. The if, that's, if that's your the, path, the, no, that's the, the, respo path the responsibility. Walk. Let me make sure I'm clear because I use a lot of words. The responsibility that, I, that I'm talking about with Flex in particular as a DJ, as an icon, legend DJ who, who's, who has a secure spot on Hot 97, he has a responsibility to the youth, to the guys that come after him to make sure that he closed it. You, you said it. You said he ended up reaching out to him uh -huh. and they ended up making it right. right. What I'm saying is next time do that without the whole public bashing the but whole it's entertainment but, Royce. No, 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 no. That's now, entertainment let, 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 Royce. Listen, who who's who's he who's being entertained? The, the audience. His yeah. people when they tuning in on what? Thursday to hear the just, just looking, looking, at, just looking yeah. at the bigger picture. Yeah. There yeah. were yeah. more people yeah. listening yeah. when Conway's record played. There were more people listening because of the back and forth. Yes. You, you feel like you feel like Funk Flex needs controversy? Yes. I I'm feel not, like I'm it not doesn't saying hurt. that. I'm yeah. saying there were more people listening when he finally played the record. And that was due to how it played out. And you can't expect people it's like, true, I don't Royce. know you. You don't know me. You talking about me. I don't know. But, but, look, but we forgetting what Flex has to go up against. When he started, it was just no hip hop station and just Channel 7. Right. Now it's Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, TikTok, 
Dots. Serious satellite. Yeah, serious. Yeah, it's Other 24 hours. Then, then, then you station. got a dude like Royce who has personality and speaks well. What if you decide to go on live at 7 p.m. and the whole New York's paying attention to you and say, fuck Flex? And they do that. What you think going to happen? Because we know how well you speak and you're killing this interview right now. You just took his whole listener share just like that. That's what he's fighting against. So just to play a Conway record ain't enough for us to care. He's putting the storyline together. He put, he's selling he's making the movie. The movie. <laughs> That's it. He's, he's making Is the it movie. the right way? I think, I think a lot of it, I think I understand what y'all saying. Yeah. I think a lot, and I'm not coming down on Flex no, at all. Of course no, not. no, no, no. I, I, I think that. a lot of us, a lot of us feel like we need to make that movie. I think a lot mm. of the, um, I think a lot of the young drill guys think that they need to make that same movie. And then people end up dead as a result of it. And then after that, nobody's entertained anymore. No, no, no. We, let's not let's not compare what Funk Master Flex did with Conway. No, no, no. I'm, to I'm, drill I'm, I'm comparing. I'm comparing. The, I'm comparing, I'm comparing, I'm comparing the mind frame of thinking that you need to make a movie. That's I, what I'm nah, comparing. Nah, that, that, that's that's a totally different situation. Ain't nobody get violent. Another taking a life to 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 or or disrespecting the dead on a record is is is, is incomparable bro. okay well let's say let's, let's do this let's do this would you would you can we all agree that there's a certain mind frame that a lot of the young cats are in when they go onto their live stream and when they feel like that they're engaging their fans and when they feel like that they're trying to get their name hot do you think that there's a um there's sort of a desperate sort yeah, of necessity in their minds yeah to be as edgy as possible. Attention. But, but new, more than yeah. that, there's an addiction. Yeah, and it's usually at the expense of another artist, another street guy, another, let's keep it funky, black person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's at the expense of another black person. And right. we all, especially when we're young, we all garden something. We all garden our egos. We all garden mm -hmm. our legacy. We all right. garden that. So when, you, when you're doing those things on a public platform, it's at the expense of somebody else. So at what point, like the people who are the most comfortable in, in our skins are the legends and the people who have cemented themselves in this shit. Flex is one of them. He sits in a seat that can't be, you know, like there's nothing, and no disrespect to Conway, but there's nothing Conway could have said on a live stream that could have affected what Flex is doing. This is just in my opinion. Uh -huh. So I think when Flex uses that enormous platform to create this same kind of song and dance again, you know what I mean? Like, again, that we continue to see, we've been seeing over the years, we almost are used to seeing and normalize seeing it. We normalize seeing us fall out with each other publicly, going at each other publicly. And then some of us, sometimes we end up making up, sometimes we just remain enemies. And, you know, while all of this is happening, everything, everything that's really on the opposing side of us is, is finding ways to partner up, unify, be in solidarity, and make decisions that are to the detriment of us, i.e. labels, streaming platforms. You know, they come together to speak to us. Right. We don't, if we got in solidarity and came together and made demands to those same people, we would be in a but much why is better that position. Happening then? Because we already embracing, we already embracing individual opposition, being, being against each other. We're, we're, we're competing. Yeah, yeah everybody, so, everybody's so, competing so let, to be the let's best. Let's be smart. Let's be smart. Who is, who is Flex competing with as far as rappers? As far as rappers? Yeah. Everybody. You know who he's competing with? Who is DJ he competing Clue. against? No, no, DJ rappers. Clue. He said as far as rappers. But no, as far as rappers. No, it's not about the rappers. It's about his time slot. You're going up against DJ Clue, another legendary dude who commands a lion's share of the listeners. People are coming up with stats and sheets. Yo, Flex, at 6.15 or at 7.29, it dipped over here because Clue did this. Yeah, but that beef will never get violent. No, I know yeah. that, but yeah, he's that's still, not the, that's the let, competition. Let's, 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 no, he's, let's, he's, let's, he's talking about the Let's use this as an example. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Young Duff, God rest his soul. Yeah, good dude. Yeah. Wallow, one of my favorite men ever in the history of black men. Wallow and Gilly, another, another one of my favorite guys. They had Yo Gotti on their show. And Yo Gotti, it was, a, according to Wallow, an amazing interview. But um, they had just did it, and he just felt like it, it would be in bad taste to, to, to drop that interview around that time while that was going on, for obvious reasons. I just think when you make those kinds of decisions, the only, the only way you can make those kinds of decisions is if you really understand uh, our culture and the way things like that only affect us. Vlad would have dropped that. 
You know what I mean? Like labels would have been like drop that. Uh, I, I can't agree with that. What you mean? I can't agree. With you that. can't agree with what? There that, we go. That Vlad would have would have just. All right, I don't want to argue that. But I'm just saying. Let's just say. <laughs> let's just say. Sixty minutes. Not Vlad in particular, but just right. what Vlad represents. Right. Platforms who don't necessarily have the same emotional connection to our culture. Right. And and don't really consider the effect that it would have on, let's say, Dolph's family. Right. Or the effect that it would have on, let's say, the youth. The youth that follows both sides. You know what I mean? Or right. what that could turn into. Mm -hmm. What that what that could turn into. There, there's things that can happen in the comment section in, in terms of dialogue that can mm -hmm. lead to murders. Mm -hmm. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. So so I think Wallow made a cultural he made a cultural decision, but he made one that wasn't necessarily in the in the best interest of the, the ratings for their show. Of the right. But it was a, it was more so he cared. He, he felt like he, he, he didn't want to do anything that would be to the detriment of the culture. And I just feel like guys like Flex and e Clue, all these guys, I feel like that they they have they have the same responsibility. Do, you have do, the same. Do you, do you feel like that was your that, that was your stance in the Mickey Fax and Lupe Fiasco situation? Which part? As far as not not wanting to, to carry it on. Yeah, I mean, I got to a point in that where um, I was able to identify with the role that I played in it. I'm still not happy with the role that I played in it. I'm not happy with the way that it turned out because from the outside looking in, it's just people looking at a bunch of niggas acting like niggas. You know what I'm saying? And it, it's really just a, a fallout, a public fallout. It wasn't a battle. It was a public fallout. He unfollowed me. He stopped the podcast, something that we spent a year building. Uh huh. You know, and that's really what I was looking at. Like, I, who who can rap better is that's that's rather here nor there. That doesn't really matter. When are we going? When are we going to start being a little bit more responsible with the way that we carry ourselves publicly? The kids are watching. Everybody's watching. You well, know what I mean? A, at what a, point? At what point does Lupe Fiasco carry himself to the to the same standard that a lot of kids that look up to him hold him to? You know, I just think uh -huh. I think it's a responsibility that we all have to not lose our cool like that. You know what I mean? And we right. are human. But, but it's, it's nah, Roy, you're being hypocritical. No, no, no. I'm not being I'm not being now. hypocritical because I'm blaming myself as well. Mm. I'm not being hypocritical. I'm not blaming just Lupe. I'm blaming all of us. What I'm saying is, if we already know that by default we're gonna make these kinds of mistakes, why set out to why set out to behave like that? Because life would be boring if everybody <laughs> just did the same shit. <laughs> listen, listen. It, everybody has a different position that they play. Right. Like 50, when 50, from, from his Instagram platform, when he clowning somebody, when he clowning Madonna, that's fucking amazing. It's funny. You know what I mean? Because right. 50's brand is, is allowed that kind of leeway. And he understands his brand, and he understands how far he can go. Same with Snoop. Snoop can fucking, you know, like Snoop can post memes and shit like that and, and his account won't even get flagged you know what i'm saying because right. he, mm -hmm. he's snoop dog but it's just like everybody can't get away with what snoop can get away with right but snoop understands his position and he he earned that position and he knows his responsibility and he steps up to the plate every time same with hove you know hove right. hove went and bailed bailed 21 savage out of jail and shit like that he did what hove is not responsible for doing but when he did it it's like man that's why hove is hove mm -hmm. right. i wouldn't have expected it to come but, from anybody but, else but those 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 decisions and and that mindset is complemented by the success yeah and it comes with the success in right. my opinion right in my opinion along with that kind of success you owe you owe you got to figure out a way to give that shit back figure out your way to give it back what i'm saying with flex from the outside looking in i think that he's such an icon now that I think he's a, his brand is above controversy amongst the youth. His brand is above that. Like yeah. I, I just don't think, I don't think that that kind of smoke looks well on him. You might not agree with the method, but now in New York City, every Thursday he's playing exclusives stuff that you wouldn't hear on the radio. Like he dropped bombs on a record I got called Super Gangster. Does not belong. Well, I can't say it don't belong in the club. Yeah, it's up to you. You know what I'm saying? But it, it's just me. So what, so what you know did we, what I mean? we learn from that? What we, we learn from that is that Conway's point has just been proven. He could have he he always played it. it. He could have played it already. And, and what I'm saying is he he's an icon, so he could have did it without the controversy. He, he doesn't need the controversy. He already did the heavy nah, lifting. But the world he is a stage, Thursday. He could have made Thursday that The world day is, is a stage, bro. The world is a stage? The world is a stage, man. If there's a formula, now, now we got to be realistic. If 
the people who sit behind the desk know the formula and they use this formula and the formula works. Why are we going to say, you know what, let's handicap ourselves and say, we're not going to use the formula. That's not We're funk. just going to be real niggas. That's nah, funk, that's funk, that's, that's funk that's Master Flex, is, that's his formula, y'all? No, I'm, I'm just saying, if it, if it, go, if it brought DJ. more attention to, to now, come on, bro, the, a battle rapper getting bombs from Funk Flex, like what? He's a controversial yes, thank DJ. You. I mean, oh, thank you, I'm glad y'all did I, all that I feel shit. Like, I feel like him. You know what I'm saying? I feel like you and his, you and his um, dialogue publicly, and then um, it turning into him like living, standing up to his word, standing right. on his word, and right. dropping bombs on your shit. I think all oh, that is beautiful. I'm talking about the I'm talking about the public the public bashing of a younger artist for expressing his concerns with the way that you are standing on your position it, it as an icon in this shit. It wasn't the first time, you know that, right? No, no, no. I, 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 listen, I'm saying that he's well within his right to handle it that way. What I'm saying is. As an icon, I don't think that he should handle it that way or has to handle it that way. I think that it's a bigger responsibility than, than just controversy at the expense of the youth. I, well, that's an unfair, that's an unfair judgment if seeing that you just went through something similar. Yeah. I mean, you can. But I'm not, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not looking to be fair, bro. <laughs> I'm just. I'm just expressing what I see, in, and I'm talking about, we were having this whole conversation in context of the way that the, way that the things that we do and the decisions we make affect our culture. So right. what was Conway's responsibility in that situation? Yeah. I mean, Conway, the way that he handled it wasn't, wasn't the, great, wasn't the greatest thing. You call it addressing concerns, and that shit, he was calling for Flex's job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so yeah, I feel, like, New York I feel like the way, I feel like, yeah. I feel like the, way, the way that the youth, I keep calling them the youth, I view him as the youth because he's a he's, he's young a as it pertains to the business. He's just right, getting into right, the business. Right. He's young in the business. Yeah, and then you you go through things. You know what I'm saying? Like right. I, I don't think that he 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 approached it right at all. But I think I think the way with somebody like Funk Funk Flex, the conversation we were having is he's at a position and he's wise enough and been around long enough to he should be able to see through that. And just reach out to him. Yeah, and understand, and understand, and understand. It's just like it's just like nah, when you but, got mm. when you got kids, and there's different reasons why they act out. We were just talking about this in the car. You know what I mean? Like, um, you know, you could be going through a divorce. Next thing you know, you having certain problems out of your kids. I have a son with autism. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I notice when I'm not around as as much as I should be. Like he, the way that he speaks to his mom, like he kind of uses her as like a punching bag sometimes. Sometimes it's like a cry out for attention. And a lot of times it's because they're not, their brains aren't developed, they're not evolved enough as humans to be able to articulate what's really wrong, what right. really the root of the problem is. And right. you really can only look to the parents to be able to kind of see that right. and like handle that in a way that kind of like promotes growth and you know you're thinking you basically looking at the bigger picture more so than you looking at okay he wrong so I'm going to discipline him right you know what I mean like, but that's in the, in the absence of the matriarch the the boys always get out of line yeah, yeah. you know what so, I mean I I grew up without my father around so I felt like when me and my mother had conversations it was man speaking to woman you mm -hmm. dig what I'm saying of yeah. course there was a reverence that you don't you know you don't exceed sir but it wasn't the normal situation, like a dad being around. Mm -hmm. We could have arguments. Yeah, and so, I'm a teenager. So you know everything, what I'm saying? everything that you did growing up, um, us looking at that in retrospect with everything that we've been through, we can understand everything that you did. We can right. understand it all. But do we look at that, and do we do we justify that, or do what's the real problem here? The real problem is how do we figure out how to get the father back in that situation? That's the real problem. But that's in order for us right. to do that, we have to not only understand what the child is doing, but we have to start addressing the situation as it pertains to the child with that with that kind of understanding. That doesn't right. mean that doesn't mean wiping out the consequences. No, 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 no. It does. It doesn't mean wiping out the consequences. All the responsibility of means, how you act. It means understanding how to toe that line. Right. And, and right. understanding how to toe that line comes along with you understanding what your position is. No, totally. There's Tone a lot of, there's of, a lot of Tone that line is if tricky. I, I, yeah, yeah, but no, no, that's, 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 that's called parenthood. If I own the car, if I own the car, it's my responsibility, it's my own. You throw a rock at my car, even if you didn't bust the window, 
you still in trouble for throwing the rock. That's yeah. the whole, like, you still, there's consequences. I understand that you might be upset, you might be pissed, anything could have happened. You might be upset that your record's not being played, you might be this, you might be that. Anything could be happening. But when you, you, there are still consequences behind all of those actions that being a youth does not excuse. Now you're a man. You got to stand let me, on what yeah, you did. Let me, let me give y'all another that's scenario. Okay, when I was on, when I was on work release, my assistant. Jesus Christ. Talk about consequences. My, my, my assistant, you know, he was taking me back and forth from, from my house to work release. And it was a strict schedule. And, you know, you couldn't be late. If you were late, you go back to the county. Right. You know what I'm saying? So this man, was he was at court when they sentenced me. He, he'd been by my side since day one. Right. You know what I'm saying? So um, without him, because I couldn't drive, and my wife was pregnant at the time, without him, I wouldn't be able to even get back and forth to work release and he did countless things for me without even being paid you know what i mean like he was working with me and for me in good faith and good faith that when because he believed in me when shit really blows up this man is going to put me on payroll i'm here i'm here for the long for the long haul a feature came came through through him and i've been in this situation so many times i could smell it from a mile away um, there was like seven hundred and fifty dollars extra dollars that was unaccounted for um, that I ended up finding out that he pocketed. Right. And um, I looked at that like, number one, he's not a liar and he's not a thief. That's why he did it so sloppy. And I could tell when he was telling me about it that he was kind of something didn't seem right about it. So right. I ended up talking to the person myself. And asking them, and they gave me a different number from what he gave me, which you know the difference was like seven seven hundred and fifty dollars. So when I approached him about it, he still had the seven hundred and fifty dollars, and I just told him to give it back. Just give it back. Just give it back to me. I didn't fire him. I didn't fire on him. I didn't do anything to him. I still love him. I forgive him. I feel like him just being caught was enough was enough punishment. Him knowing him knowing that he was trying to get away with something. He was only trying to get away with it because he thought he can get away with it. I don't think that makes him a thief. I don't think it makes him a bad person. I just think it makes him a human making decisions in certain situations. And I still needed to get the work release and I still was able to see the good in him. And you know, like if I'm, if I'm taking the same position as you, Mac, oh, that got to come with consequence, then I just blow his fucking head no, off. No, and then, no, you know, then, then I got to worry about how I'm getting seven, work. No, 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 no. This is $750. I, I'm this is just saying, there's people who will do that to you over that amount of Terri money. Terri yeah. Terrible, yeah. terrible, yeah. terrible yeah. example. Terrible example. Terrible yeah. example. Terrible example. Yeah. No, well, yeah, terrible. I'm no, 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 no. The example I'm giving is just, there's a certain responsibility. It's just like being the owner of a, of a restaurant or something. You got people on the cash register and you know, small amounts of money are coming up missing. Some, some, some owners look at that as par for the course. Some, yeah. some of them just look at it like that. You know what I mean? Some of, them, some of them want to go press charges on every that's single true. person. You know what I mean? Right. And you can do that. Be like, that's you can do that, game. and that can affect business. Right. Sometimes it's really hard to find good help or good work. You know, you got somebody, you got a really great engineer, and he comes to the studio, and he going through something with his wife, and he start falling asleep while y'all ah, cutting vocals. Terrible examples. No, no, These no. I'm just saying. Why you say that? Yeah. There's a responsibility. There's a responsibility. Do your job. Because these are all god awful examples. You, you're giving Why? me you're giving me examples of people who number one have cachet with you based on loads of work. Like you're talking about people who have earned grace. You're, you're, everything you're talking about is somebody who earned grace. People who are working in a restaurant, busting their ass, maybe putting some overtime they ain't charge you for. They take a took little something. You don't say that. Somebody who took you back and forth for a bunch of years without getting paid. He took a little something. You let it go because you know it's hard. That's grace. Right. I'm talking no, no, and, and, no, and, no, and, and it's, gra issue. it's graceful the way that I explained it, but at that time, at that time, that was probably <laughs> the that was probably the worst time in my life that you could steal something yeah, from but me. But that's you But then he that's still, you that he over, he sounded like yes. he overcharged. No, he no, 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 no. He kept seven hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. So what I want to say about the mentorship, which y'all getting into, right? Mm -hmm. When it comes to music, we are comparing kids and yeah. rappers and stuff, right? But Rappers speak a different language. Like businessmen in this game speak a totally different language. A rapper will listen to you before he listens to me. Mm -hmm. Because you're a rapper. You've been through it. They look at you as creative. The business that I do, that's my art. Mm -hmm. That's my art that I bring to the game. 
You feel me? Mm -hmm. So somebody like a Mega Measy, who is 21's manager, yeah. will follow me. Because he's a manager, I do business. We we could connect on a different we could connect that space. way. Y'all rappers, y'all connect a certain way. I always tell them y'all speak a different language. Rapper to rapper. Not, but but so you can't say that, man, because there's plenty of rappers that's great businessmen. I'm and not I saying, feel like you just push people in a category. No, 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 I didn't say that. All, all I said was y'all y'all speak a certain language, not that y'all don't know business. Right. I mean, I'm talking about mentorship. I think, a great, talking, I think, I think yeah. a great business, I'm sorry to cut you no, off. No, go ahead. A great businessman in, 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 in our culture, in, 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 in our business, is, is nurtured, cultivated, or just created through trial and error. Jay-Z wanted a record deal. That's what they were trying to get, a record right. deal. They started Rockefeller Records because they couldn't get a record deal. Right. Nobody would give them a record deal. Right. Nobody believed in them. Right. So um, aside from Jay-Z's um, connection to the street life, that was really his only, um, his only knowledge of how to conduct business. Him being a businessman happened over time, just doing different situations, being, being partners with Dame. Dame came in extremely, way more knowledgeable than you would normally see somebody coming in this kind of a business, he came in with way more knowledge. Right. So I think I think just them building that kind of a dynasty just created a monster in Jay-Z. You right. know what I mean? But without 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 them taking the approach that they took, if it was just left to the label believing in them, then that monster wouldn't have got created at all. We're, we're veering from the here's a better hit you imagine that same dude who was taking you back and forth to work release. You get a feature come through that he pulled in. It's a whole bunch of money. It's just five bands. He don't take 750. But he look at you and go, nigga, you owe me. I'm entitled to at least 3,000. I've been doing all this shit for you. Motherfucker, you should be giving me, you should be giving me four. I've been taking you back and forth for no fucking, oh, you're not going to give it to me? All right, watch what happens next time you need to make it to work release, nigga. Watch me be a little late. Don't, never, don't, it, don't, don't say shit to me. Don't say nothing to me. Or how about that other scenario? You yeah, gave that, me the job in this restaurant. You that's gave a scenario. me the job. So you, you, Mac, I'm you, pulling up. Mac, you're proving, you proving my point. I think, we're saying so? the same, I think we're saying the same thing because, because that, in that scenario, um, I almost, it, it's almost a responsibility of his to be that honest and open with me instead of lying to me. You, you know, you're lying to somebody that will give it to you. you, don't how, have you to lie. how do you deal right. with the entitlement is what I'm talking about because that's what me and Esso was speaking on. The entitlement of these kids who pull up and act like you owe me. Never mind the opportunity. It's, it's not you an, owe me. It's not an entitlement. It's an expectation. Now. That's where it's everybody goes wrong. No, Everybody's throwing around their expectations on it's people. A, who nah, have, you, who they don't feel they don't like they, they, no, they need to obligate. And I'm, I, I, can't, I can't even let that one rock because I know the kind of business I do. I've seen SO in action. One of the first things we do when we sit down is we manage the expectations. Here's how it's going to go. Here's how it might end up. A Here's fact. a better way that we can do. What do you want to do? Oh, you yeah. want to get to blah, 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 blah. Okay, here's step one. Here's step two. Here's step three. When you start fucking up on step three, but you got through step one and step two, all right, all right, let's, let's figure it out so we can get the four. Nigga, like you, you are, you still doing good. Let's just get the four. But if you've been fucking up from step one, if we just got started and you fucking up already? Yeah, it's not your responsibility to keep, keep no, giving where's, passes. Where, why, where's, the, where's the incentive for me to go to number two? Where's the faith that you're going to get number? He's giving all examples of people who got through step one, step two, and step three cool and then fucked up on step four. All right, we can go to five. I can let that go. Right. Well, you fucked up on four, and it's been a minute. I get it. No, but when if you I, when started I, when fucking I, up from number what I'm talking about is people who... Walk in this game with a level... What we're not discussing is the youth walk in with a level of entitlement who start fucking up from step one, not realizing that they fucking up from step one, tell you to kiss their ass. Yeah. I because mean, you pointing out that I they mean, you fucking gotta, up you gotta know, you gotta, you gotta kind of have an understanding of when to cut, when to cut the top, when to sever the ties in terms of like a record label. That's, you know, at some point it has to just, it has to just revert back to business. 
So how you know many? And here so we are. So how, what, how, how when I'm making exa- when I'm giving examples, I was more so talking about the responsibility because we were still talking about flex, the responsibility that comes along with the position that you've earned mm-hmm. over the years. Mm-hmm. I think if it's if it's approached more like a responsibility as opposed to just watch how you talk to me because I'm a big dog and you know like I think there's a lot that goes on in Flex's world as a DJ and an iconic one that young artists just don't understand. So, and I so think when they when, and, and that's when they express, when they express, when they express their concerns and that's what I'm gonna keep considering that as. When they express their concerns and it comes out all fucked up, it's coming from a place of ignorance. It's coming from them not understanding Flex's position. So in in that scenario, who who do you who do you hold to the standard? Of you know of 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 making sure that the information is clear and it's given. I both think of them. I think there's more than one standard. Both of them. I think you have to by of them. Rock Nation, so shouldn't they have some information? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before you even go there, I definitely got to ask you about if that's the case. Joel and Crooked, we're gonna take a break, but I want to know your stance on that. If that's how you feel about that situation. Listening to his music over the years, I realized he ain't never lie on any song he did. Is that true? I ain't never lied? Yeah. Never. I'm gonna tell, I know which song I was like. I didn't understand what he was saying until seven years later. And I said, I had to talk to K. Slay about it. You heard the Death is Certain album? I'm definitely, I'm, I'm definitely brutally honest in, in my music, but... Mm. I'm sure it's been times. You be ahead of the curve. Yeah, thank you, man. It, I'm sure yes. it's been times where I, I, I've approached it as, as more like a screenwriter. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And like I've, I've did some embellishing, but I've never, Death is certain. I've never came to the, I've never approached the pen to paint like a different version of myself to people or like, you know, like try to trick people into thinking that I'm a certain thing that I'm not. I may have just, um, I may have just painted pictures that may have been exaggerations in spots. Yeah. Oh, I, I hope this like, was, like every rapper does. Yeah, yeah. Like every creative will. Yeah. I may have talked about the gun and exaggerated the gun. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, made a, I may have gave myself a few more rounds than I really got. <laughs> <laughs> when you had the rocket launcher, I said, oh, everything's absorbed. Bust a few, few, few more shots. All right, we ready? Yeah, Everybody man. goes. All right, so in the case of... Um, Responsibility, business, obligations, being OGs. What happens when it's your peers that's going in the wrong direction? Case in point, Joel Ortiz and Crooked Eye released a, an album called, I think, the the the, the uh, death, uh, not the death, death not the death, the slaughter house, the slaughter, condemned house, and something. Something I can't remember that. Pardon me, y'all. No, I, look, but look at how Royce is gonna let us sit here and try to remember. Like I know what it is. I just don't want to cut y'all up. That's all. Uh, yeah, I'm, 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 letting, I'm, I'm letting y'all I, get y'all shit up. <laughs> it's, but, it's called but, the rise and fall of slaughterhouse. So, rise you. and fall of slaughterhouse. Right. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, in in that case, how was that dealt with? How was it dealt with? Yeah. Hmm. Which part? I'm talking about how 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 was it dealt with on me and Joe's yeah, side? Yeah, where, where do you guys stand now? Um, where I stand is um, they made a decision, mm-hmm. and the, the, the decision that they made, um, it, it's it's kind of like something that you got to kind of look at from two different angles. One angle is the friendship, and then the other angle is the business side of it. The business that we had um, in place. Because of the decision that they made and the move they made and the nature in which they made that move made it impossible for us to come behind it and do that particular business. Right. We can't come behind. You know, we can't come behind um, you guys announcing to the world that Slaughterhouse is over with and then try to sell a Slaughterhouse fan a Slaughterhouse T-shirt. It's kind of when you make that announcement and then the whole album is kind of about how everything is our fault and, you know, like painting me to look a certain way in order to drive traffic to streaming platforms and everything is kind of at our expense. You made it messy. You divided up, you divided up our fans and some people who believe you guys, some people who believe us. You know, I just think once you do that, especially since it's a brand that's been sitting for so long without yeah. any activity, right. I just think that that's, that's what killed it. So, Do you think they were trying to bait y'all? I mean, that, I, would be, I would, be assume, that would be an assumption. 
you know? Right. I think it's a possibility, you know? I think, I think... Um, was it a discussion? Did you and Joe say, yo, they're trying to bait us to, to, to really go at them? No, I don't remember having that discussion. We, we were too caught up in just not in disbelief and not even being able to believe that they would make that kind of a move in lieu of everything that was going on. Like we were doing conference calls, talking about, you know, future things that we were going to do creatively, mm -hmm. you know, things that we were going to do to relaunch the brand, relaunch did the, the site, money, relaunch did they merch. Did money, Royce? Huh? Did, 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 is the bottom line is it seems like from the outside looking in, like they needed money. Was that a factor in this yeah, whole situation? Circumstances kind of reveal like they a lot needed of things. money, right? Okay, well, if they needed money, I mean, what, what's the what's the point with that? They're not gonna ask y'all for the money, so I guess that they want to put out a project and be men and try to make their money themselves, like go on tour, yeah, yeah. I mean, figure I think, out what they need I to think, figure out. I think that's what that's where the lines get fuzzy because, yo. Joel and Crook put out the most projects out of anybody in the group since the group has been a group. You right. know what I mean? So obviously them doing music without me and Joe has never been a problem. Is it making uh, uh, money? Uh, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, 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 uh. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Because if they're jumping, I'm about to add on what he's about to say. If they're pulling out personal projects, what was the gap between the Slaughterhouse albums? Maybe, maybe that's the biggest money maker. Yeah, maybe we it is. know that that's the no, biggest but, but I'm saying, but what's the gap? <laughs> no, but hold on, hold on. Go ahead. For them to jump ahead, what was? Why didn't you and Joe do it? I know Joe said he didn't like the business model. He didn't. He wanted to control his destiny. But why isn't collectively all four of y'all saying, "Well, you know, Joe Ellen Crooked is in a situation. Let's come together and make sure they're good." Well. The situation that you guys are talking about, you speaking about the deal that Crooked said he put on the table, correct? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so if, the four, if everybody in here, if we're all a group, and I come to the table with a, with a business proposition, mm -hmm. and um, let's say, let's say it, it doesn't necessarily suit, suit everybody's business practices, which we've always ran into that issue with Slaughterhouse. Right. It took us a year to close the Shady deal. So my job... My a responsibility year. to you as your friend and group member is not to agree to everything that you put on the table. Right. My job as your friend and and how I like to handle things is to extend you the courtesy. If you present something and I don't feel like that that's the best way to go, some sort of contingency plan, something something moving in a better in a direction other than just no. You right. know what I mean? So. If, that, if it was a situation where Crook put something on the table and we just shot it down, then I would understand his frustration. We didn't shoot it down. We just asked questions. We asked the standard questions that you would ask when somebody presents something to you and it's just at the point of conversation. Until something is on black in black and white on paper as a proposal, it's not even a real thing. So we not even, it wasn't even, ever, it never was a real thing for us to say no or yes to. We never right. got paperwork or nothing. No, there never was any paperwork. It never got anywhere close to that because the guy who was making the offer, the quote unquote offer, was, was a guy who I introduced Crooked to, who I did prior business with, who Joe did prior business with. So he's somebody who not only can contact me, he can contact Joe, he can contact Ian, he can contact Keno. He's done plenty of separate business with Keno. And it was a situation that he allegedly had through a, a major, I think it was Warner or something like that. So you know how it goes, man. Like if it's, if it's somebody coming and they're trying to middleman, they're attempting to middleman the situation between us and Warner, a, a lot of the questions were like this. Okay, well, what would the terms of the deal be? So far, all you guys are saying is that Tony is interested in giving us $200,000 a piece to do an album. And that was what, all they needed to do. What have. I wanted to know was, okay, <laughs> they're going to give us $200,000 a piece in return for what? what what's the right. point? In return for what? We're going to record it in my studio. Are we going to have a recording budget? Am I going to pay for that? Am I gonna, is it going to be in my studio and I'm going to eat the studio time? Because I'm open to that too. Right. But I got to ask. Mm -hmm. When we do Slaughterhouse albums, the majority of the work always falls on me. I need to ask certain questions so I can properly prep, so I can know, because I can talk Joe into doing things. I can tell you right now, Joe's not interested in taking a big ass advance from no fucking record label, especially not from no guy in the, in the, in the middle of a record label when we can go straight to Warner or anybody else. Right. And this is a guy that I did business with who, like, I, yo, to be, to be honest, like, 
if he say that he's trying to get that kind of bag to us, I'm curious as to what what the real bag, bag is, is that he can get from Warner for us. Right. Because it's like, when he's are we going to stop letting these white boys? Dollars. When we going to stop letting these white boys just fucking rob us? And just because you mm. in business with him and you got other business with him and you feel like you want to please him and you like doing business with him, that's that's your right. But I don't. I'm not obligated to have to do that. You know what I'm saying? And right. I'm not even saying no, nigga. I'm just asking you questions. You know what I mean? Right. Like I know Tony. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that that dude is like, he'll rape you if you let him. You know what I'm saying? So Crook got some kind of connection to him. This guy don't like Joe. So, you know, the whole way that they framed it was, well, okay, well, what if Joe ain't rapping? What do you think about the three-man group? Nigga, the same thing I always thought about the three-man group. There's no such thing as a three-man group. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not doing it because Joe got to do it. I'm saying I'm not doing it because everybody got to do it. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But to turn around and paint me as this nigga who just like running behind Joe and shit like that, it's like, nigga, y'all know that that's not the case. You know what I mean? Like, there's been times where it's been shows where other members couldn't make it, and I didn't want to do those shows the same way. I'm the only member in the group who has done a show with a different member missing. I have experienced a show without Joe, without Joel, and without Crook. I experienced all three different scenarios, and none of them felt good. All of them felt like something was missing. So for them to take the position, it's like the, um, it's like the lower archy, so to speak, of the group. That's not really the case. The fans al are always let down when it's somebody missing. They they want to see they want to see everybody, and we knew that when we did all of that work to finally get the brand off of Shady because that's another thing that they have didn't tell y'all. They didn't tell y'all that all of this time we've been working on taking the brand off of Shady, and we just got it. Off of Shady. Just got it. We had just got it off of Shady. So that so the fact that that move didn't align with what the with the conversations that we were having, that move right there says it all. We had all just got got took the label off of Shady. We all were having conversations with an attorney. We all were having Zoom calls about what the next move for Slaughterhouse were. And Joe was a part of all of those conversations. Mm. Not at one time did any of them say, yo, I'm a little apprehensive about moving forward because I feel like, Joe, are you really seriously going to rap? Nobody expressed that in those conversations. Everybody was fi just fine on those conversations. It's the retire because oh, Joe's always said, I'm retired. I'm not doing it. So the way you're painting it, it's like for you guys, for the sake of Slaughterhouse, he's ready to go. Yes, so because because that's just the truth, bro. Got like, you. We're having conversations. We're ha all, everybody's involved in these conversations. It's not like Crooked was busy that day and he didn't get to hear, you know, the, these different conversations. Everybody was involved in the conversation. And Joe's position, actually his public position, has always been, I'm retired, I'm not rapping again, but I will consider rapping with Slaughterhouse, but it can't be on Shady Records and we have to yeah. own it. If we own it, because think about it, Slaughterhouse is something that all four of us got together and collectively built over like a 10 year time, man. It's like the only tangible thing, the only tangible asset that we built and that we have, that we can honestly say that we built it from the mud with really no help. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like <laughs> putting, it on, putting it on Shady had a lot of perks and then there was a lot of downside to that as well to try to continue to scale it in a major label kind of an infrastructure, that was a little bit difficult for us to kind of find that sweet spot. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of Joe's trauma responses to, to things that he's been through in the music business and the way that he reacted to things just kind of affected the morale and it affected the business relationship, the working relationship with Shady Records. So the, the, the only logical next step was either to leave it on Shady and let it die on Shady, which why it, would we do that? Or get it off. So we took it off. We took it off. But understand that when we have to t go in to fight to take it off, that's a Royce to five nine fight. That's a Royce to five nine fight with my friends, Marshall, Marshall yeah. and Paul. That's a that's that's a strain on my relationship with my friends. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, but that's yeah. that's a sacrifice that I'm willing to take because I have a responsibility to Crooked, Joel, and Joe, just from the camaraderie and the things that they have, of, the luxuries that they've have afforded me by grinding with me when we all were just on the internet doing our thing. And you called me and said, yo, why don't y'all do y'all version of Swagger Like Us? And you named every person. It should be you, Joel, Crooked, and Joe. He's telling you I started the group.
<laughs> so, so, so when you think about it, when you think about it from that, he's telling you I started the group. I'm telling you, Mecca started, started Slaughterhouse. Just so, so y'all, just so y'all caught that. So when you think you know about right? it, when you think about That's it, why from, I keep him on the show. When you, <laughs> when you think about it, when you think about it from that perspective, um, to allow, to allow, because at that time, if you feel like you ain't, you don't trust that Joe is gonna rap. That's the time to say it right there. And, and you know what? I, I can respect that because I love niggas. And I just walk away, we'll just move on. It's a fight not worth fighting. But if we all agree as a group that we're about to fight that fight, now let's go fight the fight. We went and fought it. And then One. they were gracious enough to let us off the label. So now we off the label with somewhat of a strained relationship between me and them. Right. But I, that's something I'm willing to put on the line for them. You know what I mean? Right. And I also, I'm also confident in the love as friends that, that you'll me, get back. Paul, and Marshall you'll, have. You'll right. get back. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really tripping. You know what I'm saying? Like, we've done a lot of, we did Bad Me Seville over there. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of great things that came from me, from us being over there. You know what I mean? But it, it just hit a time where it was time for me to put these different things into perspective. And Slaughterhouse is one of those things that I just felt like it, it, was, something, it was something that we needed to be in control of and now. We now I feel the same way about Prime. I'm not gonna let. We can do a deal tomorrow with Prime on any label. You know what I mean? And it can work out or it may work out. But if it don't work out, I just don't think Prime is something because of the way in which it was built should ever sit somewhere. It should be you know the people who build it should be the ones who say how it falls apart if it's gonna fall apart. Right. So um, well, we, I got I gotta ask collectively, why didn't y'all just go indie? That's what I'm saying. Like, it, all of these things were an option. They were all being discussed. How you they were all being indie. discussed. How you going to go indie if two of them really need money? You need you some think the money. money. Where you think the money is at in a situation where the brand is already built? They didn't need the money? So then the, yeah. the motivation so if, is ridiculous. I'll tell you why. You notice he said the four of them talk. Go loud, Kino. You know what he said the four of them talk? What no representation of none of those calls. Tony is my man. <clears throat> Tony is the dude that we did the first, one of the people we got the masters back from when he first got out of jail. I talked to Tony all the time. Tony never told me he put a million dollars on the table. I talked to Crook all the time. Now, me and Royce was doing different bits. We weren't talking as much at that time. They knew we weren't really talking. Crook never told me. Actually, Crook said, I got a million dollars for the group. If they don't take it, I'm done. But he never told me he was getting a million dollars from a dude I introduced. And he never, and he never told me that. He didn't present it to me and say, "If y'all don't take it, I'm done." Well, was there a reason why he didn't do that? that he didn't conflicting do stories. Because it sounds like you, you don't have a good rapport with this guy. I mean, listen, man. Like, so this, if he'd have told you it was coming from this guy, your answer would have been no, 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 it, no. So Tony the fact that it was answer. coming through through Tony, okay, that was something. That was something to know and to consider. For what it is, you know what I mean? But it wouldn't have stopped me from, from doing it if we all decided that that's what we were going to do. Mm -hmm. right. Joe but we and Tony don't, don't fuck with each other. Yeah, see? So why would Joe get out of a shady deal and go fuck with somebody who... He don't, don't fuck with. For, for the same reason he don't rap, but he would rap with Joe? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, but even even in that scenario, um, when, Crook, when Crooked presented it to me, I told him I would go talk to Joe about it. Mm -hmm. And he said, all right. And when I went to talk to Joe about it, Joe said, listen, man, I'm open to discussing it. You know what I'm saying? And when we went back to them with that, Crooked was like, we want to we want, we know, okay, we want to know more about what he's offering. What is he offering besides, y'all are just hearing 200 a piece, and y'all thinking to yourselves, damn, I could use that 200. Well, shit, so can I, bro. You don't think I like money? You know what I'm saying? Right. Like I like money too. Right. But I've also I've also been on both sides of the fence. Um, I've been on Joe's side of the fence with Joe very late in his career, well, in his journey. He he knows he he was able to experience how it feels to reap the benefits of shit on the back end. Hmm. Right. I've been on both sides. I've experienced reaping the benefits of uh, uh, monetarily on the back end as well as just going into a situation, mm -hmm. taking some shit out the taking front end and just moving and never on. Get it, never get nothing else. See, what, yeah. I, what I find is when you move that way, a lot of times you're not really building anything. You're just money grabbing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when you're talking about scaling the brand, especially with the way the tech is evolving, 
more of these situations have to be long plays. And right. it's not just because we taking Joe's advice on it or they taking my advice on it. We, we, we all speaking from experience. Mm -hmm. right. You know what I mean? So it's like at some point, people need money. Has Shit like people need money. Have, they, we have to get to a point where that can't just be the only thing that we're considering when we're building something. Right. You know, sometimes sometimes all, all when you're building something important, you have to be open to taking risks. It comes and with taking, sacrifice. And taking less. Sometimes yeah, you so, take less. So, you know, and then, you know, but Joe was was saying he's still open to doing it. It would be going against his better judgment, but he would need more information. Crooked wasn't trying to provide more information. Crook was just feeling Sign. the way that niggas was asking did, questions. Did, well, did Crook, mm. but, well, was it, did Crook feel like Joe was being a diva? Everything Joe do, Crook feel like he being a diva. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? And Joe is easy to paint as a diva. But what about when you are being unreasonable? You know what I mean? Mm. What about what about when you're painting pictures? Listen, man, you don't have to use so much deception if what you're doing is is a is a is a righteous move. Right. You don't have to. You threw you threw a motherfucking grenade at a at a tent full of young kids that I was standing there. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. knowing that if you threw that grenade, you may hit the you may hit the tent, but you gonna I'm gonna catch some shrapnel. Right. What did I do to deserve that shrapnel? You know what I mean? Like you clearly said the issue wasn't really with me, but you had to somehow insert me into the scenario as also the issue who wouldn't move without Joe. For justification. Make me look like I'm I'm, you know, the puppy, the puppy <laughs> to the big dog. Right. Make me appear to be like the guy who's just like, I'm not moving unless Joe moves. Right. Mm -hmm. and once again, Royce took Joe's side. These are crooked words. These this is verbatim what he said. And I'm like, took Joe's side. When the fuck was it ever a side? Mm. Like our natural, our, our natural, our natural guidelines that we have in place in terms of business decisions in Slaughterhouse is one rule, and that's it has to be three people voting unanimously in order for us to make any decisions as it pertains to the group. The worst thing <laughs> Why? Because they never would disagree. So to move them as a group, even they never disagree with each other. Something needed to get done, and he ain't feel comfortable. None of them feel comfortable. If Joe ain't feel none of them feel comfortable. So it was real. It was so yeah, so with this, so with so with so, this, what's with up? Now that's confusing, because then how do we get here? Yeah, so le so le le legally, let's put the moral part of it to the side. Just just legally, just as an agreement that we had, just as business partners. Y'all, y'all, kind of like breached our agreement, our our moral agreement that we had by even going and taking it upon yourselves to announce the group being over. It, that's not even y'all decision to make. Mm. Y'all needed one more member to make that decision. Right. Y'all, why can't, why couldn't we get a text message? Why couldn't you just text me and say you was you was off the shit? Crook, Crook been off slaughterhouse before. He said he said he was off slaughterhouse plenty of times. Joe been off slaughterhouse. Joe's publicly said he's off slaughterhouse. It just so happened when Joe says it, it gets take it gets taken and internalized a different way by the people than when Crook says it because Joe just has a more, more of a problematic history in right. people's minds. Right. And, and so this was this was just, this was just an opportunity for them to kind of like I hate to say this, but play the the victim. Right. There's no victim here. You're it's not you're not, sit, you're not sitting around. Okay, cool. So if it's marketing, just say that it's marketing. You no, I mean? then it's not marketing. But then it's not marketing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because it's not it's, marketing, Because right? it's the perception. Yeah, okay, cool. got, they it's can't the tell you. If they, okay, okay. They, so they marketing for they, what we so saw from the outside is they're marketing <laughs> to try to sell the product and they needed money. Right. Okay, okay so cool. you take, okay. take a case in point. Um, you look at uh, Outkast, right? When, when Andre 3000 started dressing crazy, People was like, yo, what is he doing? He's bugging, da da da, da. But in his mind, he's like, I'm marketing. I'm selling us. Yep. I'm sacrificing what y'all think of me publicly mm -hmm. for the sake of the, the, the betterment of our situation. So and you that think, didn't so you, come out till later. So you think, you, you feel like, um, I don't know if you're saying this, but are you saying that what they I'm saying did, you, what and they did should, you and Joe should have teamed up for the betterment like, ah, of the group. 
No, uh, now it's our they, turn. They, they, they sacrificed And then y'all would have came back man. together like, ah, oh, now we're all back together. Ah, how, how can, how can we come back, to, like, oh how can God, we come back together like, if, it's, if they announced that it's over? Because y'all can reconcile, Royce. Because nobody, nobody, nobody's, nobody's listening to Realistically, bro, Royce. They announced it's I over, I and then y'all put, you and Joe get together. It's not over yet. It's a whole movie. The song will continue. It's a my brother, my brother. It's a whole movie. My brother, let me let, let, hold on, Kino. Hold on, hold on, Kino. My brother, listen, listen. Anything that y'all <laughs> are saying, anything, and that's the issue. Anything that y'all are saying is possible through communication. Right. That's mm-hmm. all I'm saying. I'm not saying that that wouldn't have been a possibility had it been done right. Shit. Me and Lupe, me and Lupe could have battled if it had been done right. Me and Mickey could have sparred if it had been done right. Right. All I all I ever asked was just don't disrespect me. You know what I'm saying? Like. Include me in on what's going on. You know what I mean? Don't blindside me. Don't run the game me. on me. Yeah, don't blindside me. Paint me to look a certain way. Turn some fans against me and l- put it on me to be the most understanding motherfucker in the world and try to figure out how we can m- turn this into a better thing when you just basically set out to destroy it. But Royce, you mm. just told us when the show started, you gotta forgive some niggas, I right? Yeah. And you gotta yeah. move on, right? But, but, yeah. And we can come back. But what I'm saying, what I'm, what I'm saying is not to say that I don't forgive them. Mm-hmm. What I'm, what I'm saying is not to say that I haven't moved on from it. Well, what Y'all you asked me where we stood, All and right, I so said there were certain decisions that they made that put the business just where the business is. It is what it is. Right. Us as people. There's really nothing to reconcile. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if, if we're in a relationship and you make a move where you know that you're putting the relationship on the chop, chopping block, you made a decision. I, can, I still forgive you. I still forgive you. But there's really nothing to reconcile at that point. We ain't beefing. We don't have no more business with one another. You really showed me how much respect for me that you have as a man. Right. And if you want to apologize for what you did, I'm willing to talk and accept your apology. Even even apologize for whatever I did that made you feel like that you needed to approach me in this manner. Yeah. I just thought different of you. That's all. So anything that I ever express publicly, I'm not I'm not really that good at expressing these kinds of things publicly. So there's a lot of things that I said publicly in response to that that I, I, I regret. I don't feel that I should have handled it that way. But I'm not I'm I'm human, too. I'm not always perf- the greatest at giving grace the, the, the greatest way. Mm-hmm. When people do things as your family member to hurt you, it's really, really hard. It's really, really easy to forget all of the redeeming things about that person and all of the great times that that person provided. I'm thankful for the great times that they provided to me. Right. I'm thankful for how sharp they had me lyrically over the years. I'm thankful for all of the energy and all of the hard work that they put in and the house over the years. Removed. Yeah, it, it, I'm just, I'm just, I'm disheartened by the way that it ended. And I just know that through, through communication with the right communication, so many different variables could be considered. So many different things could have right. got done and they just kind of put a halt to all of that, which in my opinion was over mostly personal feelings that they weren't willing to address and they had every opportunity to address them. Well, again, I feel like you're being hypocritical. Why? Because didn't you go through the same shit with M? No. With what? Didn't at some point you was dissing him, and you was dissing the group? No, D12. I, 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 had, a, I, had, a, right. I had a I had a falling out with D12. Yeah, right. I had a falling out with D12. But I'm that, of course, that affects my your relationship, relationship with, with M. Right. Of course. But y'all reconciled. Yeah, we ended up reconciling later. Yeah. And then working mm-hmm. again. So Slaughterhouse and y'all could yeah, do the so same do motherfucking the same thing. thing. <laughs> it's, uh, it y'all might be a possibility the same thing, Royce. Yo, y'all could get over It might things. be a possibility. Great the music. fans would be happy. What, what, what was the point of fighting so hard to get it off shady? Because you guys y'all, they built had something. a facts, 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 facts. You wanted facts, it. I think, facts. I think, I think the, the, frustrating, the frustrating thing about being in a position that me and Joe is in is that um, all, all of these things that y'all are saying are, are things t- to be considered. Like, that's, that's looking at the silver lining. That's looking at the brighter side of it. But I think that when, when the actions that took place to put us here don't get considered by the public, and, and it was kind of presented to the public that way, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, um, it, it's a blow to the morale. It's a, it's a blow to the morale of the group. It puts us in a different position 
in terms of the way we feel about the, the future of the group and Messes moving with forward. the chemistry. Yeah, because, I mean, it's a chemistry thing, and it's, it's, it's a respect thing. Mm. You know what I mean? Can, can it be reconciled and we end up doing things at Slaughterhouse later on down the line at any time? It's always a possibility, but, but we went into this conversation with you asking, where, where do we stand now? And I'm trying to explain to you how we got here. And we got here because, because of decisions that they made. I can understand why you guys are like, um, why you're expecting me to or you're uh, 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 um, telling me that I should consider certain things in order to think about the long run of things and what's, what's the best decision for the entire group. Right. I, just, I just wish they would have extended us the same Kind of Curtis. I'm, Curtis. Sure, I'm sure. I'm sure. Funkmaster Flex feels the same way about Conway, but look what he managed to turn it into. I'm sure he wishes Conway had. Thank you very much. Uh, let's call the call back. There uh, you go. I'm sure he wishes Conway yeah, had came so, in him as very. I mean, as, I, a I different wish. Way. I wish it was. Um, I wish things were that black and white. I wish we could put the shoe on the other foot with every single scenario within this shit. But I think we got to be. We got to be smarter than that. We know better than that. We know. We know that. Um, you can't you can't say a man cheating and a girl cheating is the same fucking thing. This is just a double standard. You oh wait, I mean? wait, wait! In this case, in point, who's the girl? It don't matter. A girl. I'm just saying a girl. A girl cheating. A yeah. girl cheating is viewed. I'm talking about social construct now. Right. A girl. A girl cheating is is looked at one way. Right. A guy cheating is looked at one way. All right. They're both cheat. It's both both of the things yeah, are cheating, but there's a double standard here that exists. Right. I'm Do not saying that it's a, a fair thing. I'm just saying that everything isn't just that cut and dry to say, I cheated, Who? you cheated, so Who? I'm cheating. Who's the girl? The girl is the girl. So is a, who's the, the girl is Slaughterhouse. The girl is the girl. And, and, and Joe, so the, the girl in this situation. So if he, if, he, if he said the, uh, the old saying, fool me once, shame on you. Right. Can he just be like, yo, I don't want to be fooled twice? Is that what you Why is that not fair? Why is it not fair? No, what, I, what, I, what I'm saying, 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 what I'm saying is in the context. So this is the listen, this listen. Is what I'm King saying, what I'm forgiver. saying is in the context. Right. Let me let me try to let me try to. What, what I'm saying, God and Jesus Christ. What I'm time. saying is in the context of responsibility. Yeah, you're not gonna forget. Cause y'all, cause y'all, we keep, we keep, we keep, yeah, yeah. No, no, I'll get you. We we keep reverting back to responsibility. I just feel like. There's a responsibility that comes along with being an OG. There's a responsibility that comes along with being friends with a nigga. There's a responsibility that comes along with being in a group. There's a responsibility that comes along. And sometimes you can't compare certain things. You know, I can call you a nigga. That's one thing. White person call you a nigga. That's a completely different, different thing. thing. You know what I mean? Like sometimes we got to be smart enough to be able to separate, disentangle some of these things. You right. know what I mean? Like Funk Flex. It's almost not even comparable. It's not, almost not even the same thing. He has a responsibility to the culture, not necessarily to Conway, with how he carries himself just as an icon right. and the role that he plays in contributing and making sure that motherfuckers don't keep shooting themselves in the foot. Because there's always going to be youngins who lash out like, like, like Conway did. Right. You know, but if that kind of behavior, if you kind of like embrace that person, disarm that person and give that person the information... Now he's a person who will handle himself accordingly moving forward, and he'll well, embrace the next young. Well, I believe in because karmic. there's a lot of because there's a lot of cycles in place already right. that we already fall into. But I believe in karmic karmic um, circles, and sometimes you might have a situation with some someone where you play a specific role, and then in another situation you're playing that other person's mm -hmm. role. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of see it from both sides and be yeah. like, well, if they gave me a pass. Then that means I owe the universe Pay a pass forward. to somebody else. Yeah, I'm not in the position. I'm not in the position to, to not give my brother the grace, bro. Mm -hmm. Never will you hear me say I'm not giving them a pass. Right. I'm not in the position to give them a pass. Right. They took the same L that I did. They shot themselves in the foot along with us. Mm -hmm. They didn't. They didn't. They how, not, how so? Because they ruined something that they had 25% equity in. I don't think it's ruined. I mean, but that's but it's that's ruined. nah, that's ruined, bro. It's Listen, ruined. that's ruined. That, that comes down. That nah, comes down wrong. to it's that wrong. comes down to how is how is how you perceive it. Yeah. That's all. That's all perception. That's that's one person may ruined. think it's not ruined. Another person might just be over it. I don't, I Another don't think person it's might ruined. be tired of seeing us go through a bunch of shit. Another person might just be tired of Joe. Another person might just be like, God damn man, y'all niggas. I just hate seeing y'all argue. I don't know who to believe. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when you when you create that kind of mess, and it's not necessarily indicative of what we built and what we presented to the fans prior to, 
it, it may not look the same on us that it looks on another another group. You know I'm, what I'm saying? Right. Like people but, aren't used to us having these public, especially not yeah, crooked. But, they, but that's people, why you can get past it. Like I, people aren't. It's not like y'all made a, a a career out of being messy. That's more music. Why? Why not? Because if because <laughs> <'cause, 'cause, laughs> you know, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because because for the greatest of our genre managed to put it together and make a fucking super group. Why wouldn't anyone want that back? Yes, I'm biased. Yes, I have personal ties. Yes, I have a personal stake in the in the logo itself. But why wouldn't anyone want that back now? Especially now when that era is like popping mm -hmm. and, and the bar's been set and you niggas is right here. Yeah, who wouldn't want like I, who wouldn't I, want I, that? I, hold on. Well, Let's, I, I yo, do. Can, for, I for, 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 for one minute. What would be a better group than Slaughterhouse? The Royce the Five Nine could be in. Can we assemble that? What would be what? A better group. Black Thought. Black Thought. Lupe. Saha. Oh, you mean just naming four yeah. four killers? Four killers. Yeah, Black Thought. Saha. Black Thought. Lupe. Lupe. Abso. Nah, stop at four. Boom. Okay. Black Thought. Saha. Lupe. Royce. So it can't be. It could be recreated. It and could be other situations. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, yeah, it could it could yeah. be re it could be recreated. That's a separate that's a whole it's, separate it's, conversation. It's, I mean, it's, it's unlimited now, bro. I did this artist, this artist that from from um from our era that are doing collaborative albums now all Facts. over the place. Yeah, I think I think what it, what it is about Slaughterhouse is there's a there's a certain lightning in the bottle that we created that I personally don't feel could ever be recreated. Not that particular chemistry of people. It's something about. Those three synergy guys. Synergy is a big deal. Yeah. There was a, yeah. there was a synergy there that I just don't personally feel that we can recreate. And um, to be clear, Mac, I agree with you exactly with what you're saying, and that's exactly where I was at with it. In terms of the music, I was ready. Like I was more excited about doing slaughterhouse shit than anything else that I got going on. I think that's why I was so heartbroken when they did what they did. You know what I mean? So. I think that a lot of the energy now is directed more to towards me and Joe to just kind of like overlook it than it is at them. Like, I don't think they're being held yeah. accountable by the yeah, people for yeah. the decision. I totally they agree yeah. with that. Yeah. I totally yeah. agree they threw a rock at you yeah. and said, ow. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> people, people think that we being unreasonable, which I, I have the, the propensity to be very unreasonable. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Yeah. But when you're talking about people who I just, you know, I, I just respect to the utmost. Crooked, crooked, I just respect to the utmost. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, he gets all the leeway in the world. But I mean, along with, with all of that respect comes heartbreak when it's coming from that kind of person. Yeah, understood. understood. We, we just talked it's about understood. that. Understood. Literally so in regards to Slaughterhouse. No, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Before, before you go there, are you addressing this situation on the Heaven, Heaven experience? What do you mean addressing it? Like, is there a record? No. Is there any? No. Not at all. It's nothing to address. It's nothing to so, address. In terms of Slaughterhouse, it's pretty much done. There's no group coming back, no music. This is the nail in the we haven't. There, there's no conversations that have been had about that. That means that that means there still could be. Because Kino just said why with the no, music. No, uh, Kino, no. Kino uh, said no. He said Kino why? Said no, no, no. Kino, I, I'm Kino trying to understand. Is why? it done or is it not? Right. Right. However, I'm just forgetting about he was part of creating Prime. Facts. Uh -huh. He was a part of creating Facts. Yeah, he yeah, no. Great. So, so you don't think you don't think I would love to do Bad Me Ziva right now? You don't think I would make more money doing that than anything? Yeah. You think I'm a? You think yeah. I'm a? You think well, I'm a? You so think what, I'm a go do? You think so I'm a go? Why isn't that happening? Yeah. Have you asked for that? I mean, there, there's it. There isn't a particular reason. You know what I mean? Like, the key is to not stop looking at it like there is a reason. It don't have to be a reason. It just right. didn't happen. Right. You know what I'm saying? So instead of me looking at him like, man, this nigga, let's say if I needed money, if I needed money, then maybe that would turn into me, Being my mad. imagination getting the best of me and thinking that it's something personal, why they're not going out of their way to hurry up and put me in a better position and do bad me evil again. We friends, right? And I'm like, when do we stop that shit, man? Like, wh what do I do? A whole rollout called the rise and fall of bad and evil? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, paint Marshall out to be the fucking antichrist when he he did the first bad me evil, not having to do that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, 
I just like to live my whole life in grace, man. Like Shady Records did a lot of things in regards to Slaughterhouse that I disagree with. Right. But I can't, I can't view them through that lens, man, because too much good has come from that reconciliation. Too, I, much, too much good has come from reconciliation with me. Me and Joe's relationship is a reconciliation. Right. I'm not turning my back on Joe Budden. Joe Budden made comments about Marshall and, you know, like people over there don't fuck with him at all. You know, and a lot of people were looking at me like, yo, why do you still fuck with him if they not fucking with him? Right. My answer to that is because he's my friend. That's why. Right. And my responsibility as friends to both sides is to not tell them how they should feel, not expect them to just take some shit from Joe because he my friend. Yo, you should be able to feel how you want to feel. I'm not telling you how to problem solve. You have the liberty and you're at the luxury to handle your problems however you want to handle them. And with Joe, how I handle my friends is I don't stick my friends in the trash when they make mistakes. Joe made a mistake. I disagreed with it. Me and Joe had a small falling out about it. We talked about it. We got past it. He apologized to me. He told me he loved me. And he's still my friend to this day. Even, even though I know that I could have took a more business approach if it was just about money and just moved on from him and continued to nurture the relationship with Shady Records. Right. I'm not cut like that. You know what I mean? Like, if you my friend, you my friend. So if I extend that to you like I extend it to the rest of my friends, because a lot of people be like, yo, he always defending Marshall. He always defending Marshall. Well, shit, I'm always defending all my friends. They said the same thing about Joe. About Joe. Same thing with the Wu-Tang shit. Joe did some shit. He said some shit about a straight up icon that I despise the fact that he did that. Right. But he's my man. So my, my thing is to tell him how I feel about it, how I disapprove of it, and to do everything that I possibly can to try to help rectify that situation and make it better. So it won't come down to a situation where I have to ride with him. Because if it comes down to it, I'm riding with him. And that's just how I've always, I always been that way. You know what I'm saying? So right, wrong, and indifferent, that's just how it is. That's how I roll with my niggas. So I just feel like the least you can do is tell me. Tell me you out. Right. Be straight that's up. That's it? Be straight up. I can try to talk you out of it, but if I can't talk you out of it, then I got to respect that. I got to respect that, and we continue to be friends, whether we in a group or not. But if you blindside me, knowing that you, I'm going to feel the way about you blindsiding me, and you say fuck it and just do it anyway, I got to consider that. Can I forgive you? Of course, you're my nigga. I love you. I can give you all the grace in the world. But how, at what point do I stop forcing the situation? You know, I, I can't force niggas to rap. If they don't want to rap, they don't want to rap. Right. If y'all want to rap that way, y'all want to get with Tony and, and make a whole album about me and Joe. <laughs> and you think that that's a good decision. And some of the fans b believe you and they, they think that me and Joe just sitting back licking our chops. Some rich niggas that just don't want to see these niggas get money. Come on, man. I don't believe that they that Crooked and Joel think that about me. I right. don't believe that. No, I refuse to believe. No, that. but it's right. marketing. They gotta sell it. Okay, their okay. So if money, if, 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 money if, makes money. Yeah, see, yeah but you see, putting yourself in a position. No, 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 no. This. Because you explaining something to me uh -huh. that I understand. Okay, go ahead. I understand marketing. Right. I understand that that's what it is. If that's what it is, then that's just what it is, and I'll just, I'll take it as that. That's a, that's not a hard thing for me to fucking ascertain right. that they marketing at our expense. My thing is why. Because they need, because they, they need the, sell. Royce, you, what I was going to say is you have put yourself in a position to not need. You put yourself in a position to do what you want to do. Yeah, mm -hmm. if I could tell you three ways that they could have done it. Yeah, like, like, how do you, they didn't have to do it. Let, let's say, let's say this, let's say this, let's say this. No, no, I, I totally agree, but when people need money, niggas do not make the right decisions. Okay. Niggas should be fucking cloudy, and they know they should go left, that and pressure. they go fucking right, because they overthinking, they need money. Needing money in this business is Look, fucked up. De desperation. Yeah, yeah. Desperation. Cool. You can make more money, own more shit, and not fuck over your niggas. How about and this? You don't, you don't open up that line of communication, and that's the end, but, end. But, hold on, but I totally agree with you. So, what so if, why, do, why continue to do business with somebody going back? I'll tell you why. What did Roy say earlier? It took y'all a year to do the shady deal. So To it, close it. Huh? To close it, yes. To close it. So now, these two guys is like... This, this, this the shit, clock is ticking. The clock is ticking. Well, they, know why, they know why the shady deal took a year. No, but what I'm... I, I feel you on that. I'm just talking casually. 
But if it took it, and you know, Royce is like, I need to know what's going on. These guys sound like, I fuck need knowing money. what's going on. It got to happen now. I need money. It's not that cut and dry. Okay, so, okay, so let, let, how, about, how about looking at it? I feel you. Money? How about, how, about, how about I paint this scenario? See, there it is. This is what I'm saying. How about, if you how about need I, money, you paint, react differently. How about I paint this scenario to you? Okay, how about Crooked puts a proposition on the table? Mm-hmm. Even though it wasn't in black and white, it's a proposition that's on the table. We haven't spoken to any other labels. Why, why, do we, why, why are we pigeonheeled to just doing that situation? Because I can get this money fast from this guy, <laughs> from this guy, Tony. Tony how do you, told how, me. How do, you know, how do you know how fast you can get because money? That, listen, Tony listen, still, listen, I don't listen, know. I don't know. We don't right. know. How yeah. do you know how fast you can get money from another label if you haven't had a conversation with another label? I know I'm not even thinking about it because my money is... How about this, Royce? He probably don't think he could get the money from another label fast. No, but that's what I'm saying. Tony's like, this shit's coming right now. Nobody can do this for you. It don't matter. That's scum nigga shit. That's regular shit, you know? These yeah. niggas need not, money. Listen, you're not talking about two guys that never done that never did deals before. No, but I'm talking, talking about two guys that might be at their money. You're talking about, talk about, you talk about look, two. Look, look, there's just there's two scenarios. Uh-huh. Either they were trying to bait y'all. Or and hype money. it up even more, or they needed the bread. Otherwise, it don't make no it's, sense. It's an enigma. Like we do, nobody Why will never know. That? Nobody will never know. Is it is That's it is it, is it hard for you decision. to feel like that they From needed them, money? Bro, so it was bad. a retro. It was a no, Mercury not, retro going not, on at the time. Matter. It's not hard for me. To, it's not hard for me to feel like they need money. It's just it's just difficult for me to understand two guys who I know very well who are brilliant, brilliant men. Making such a making such a hasty decision that costs so much. Let me ask you a question. No, listen, listen, listen. When I say cost so much, I mean taking a very small amount of money on the front end to ruin something that you already have ownership in. Dr. Drake, Dr. Drake probably would have gave us two million dollars if he if he knew that we were that we were looking for a situation. What if it was jealousy? I mean, I can't speculate. What, 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 what is it to be jealous of? I'm putting out projects. They're not moving the same way. This is. This was the bread and butter for me. That's this was the hype. Said. But it's not the hype for you, and it's not the, the hype, hype for, for him. Joe. <laughs> and I'm mad. No, but you said. And but I'm you, mad because but when why you say, I don't get the same. But when you say, when you say, why I ain't getting the same when you say, love. comfortability? When, when you say that's not the hype for me and Joe, um, I think that's a little bit inaccurate. That's a little inaccurate, and that's a little bit unfair because that's not a financial connection. That's not a financial situation when you talk about it being the hype for us. Slaughterhouse is like, to me and Joe, Slaughterhouse to Joe is like what Joe's pot is to Joe. Mm. Period. It's something that he, we built and we own. We right. got it, we took it off Shady, now we own it together. Right. So it's-, it's, it's But now it, what is it worth? It means everything to us, and it's worth, sky's the limit what we can make it worth. We already, we already built it up to a multi-million dollar operation. Would you be open to replacing? Joe and Crooked? No. I knew, yeah. he, I knew he was going to say that. No. If he wouldn't rap without one of them. Did y'all talk about the NFT thing we just did? No. no. Mm-mm. This was actually came from the Slaughterhouse idea that we talked about all individuals. So Royce did an NFT for Capitalism. And we basically sold a portion of his royalty as an NFT, right? Let's say we made it 130000 in 10 minutes. Just a small portion. Which means we, instead of going to a record company and saying, give us this money, we went to a base of people. And you, you can only do something like that when you, when you, own, when you own it. Uh-huh. So, right. so just, just that way of thinking, when you think of the possibilities with, with Web3, when you think, of, you think about the metaverse, there's so many other things to consider. Like, even if we didn't get together and just do music just right away, even if everybody wasn't ready to do music right away, even just something small as and fundamental as relaunching the merch is automatically a brand new revenue stream that just hadn't been tapped into that has always been on the table. So, so in order to be able to tap into these different revenue streams, you got to have a brand that's already built. We did all of the heavy lifting already. Right. So to, de- t- to make a decision to completely wreck that, just to go get a one-time check from somebody who doesn't necessarily mean you well, I mean, I just think that they owe more to me and Joe 
They then did. That, that, yeah, but, but, you, but, but at the end of the that day, does, that doesn't reflect the, just there, their there's personal a, There's feelings. a base to everyone's loyalty, and that base becomes their family. Can I paint another and, scenario? And there's nobody outside of that that if, if my family needs something right now, that's uh, I don't care who's in the way. But what if, what if what if the person who you built who you built doesn't matter? Brand, my daughter's you, hungry. No, no, no. Because the person that you built the brand with, okay, they can say whatever they want about Joe. Them standing next to Joe made them more money than anything they've ever did in the history of their careers Didn't to I feed their families. That? Yes. Didn't I just say so that? So at what point? At what point does that get considered? I, not you throw, at all. Because I'm throw mad. Me, you throw me I'm under. Mad. You throw that me under the. That is considered. Throw, no, no, no. You That's throw, why they want the album. Okay, so do I'm we, mad. So do I. I yeah, want but, the album too. But, but my scenario is this: Y'all said y'all was all getting what two hundred, two fifty, right? That's what he said. Cool. Let's just say they thought strategically enough to say Joe and Royce ain't fucking with it. Let's put the attempt together. Whatever they say, no, they got some money. You, they might have got doubled. Nah. Whatever, nah. whatever they nah. cut. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Nah. Don't do that. They whatever did. they cut might have been. They did. They nah. did. So they did all of that just to get the same portion. N not even, not, uh, not even the 200. That, you think that might not even have been that. Hold on, hold on. He said less? Because they, would, they wouldn't be the, of the same value. Without if they're getting Joe, less, they definitely yeah. needed that you, correct. You, that, that's you're not nuts. of the same value. You're stronger together. That's fair. Exactly. You can't see the vision. So, so the they they should have called it slaughter. You know what I mean? Now, Don't mind you, the house mind you they, put slaughter. They, they, you know they, they, had just, like, they had just did a project together. Them two together. Right. Mm -hmm. A real dope project. And what happened? You, you know what I'm saying? No, they could have. They could have just. No, no. He said they just. They did said they did before. They, they, had, just, they, they had just. They had just did a, about this? They had just did a project together. Mr. Hip hop. He didn't adult, know. Adult project. Excuse uh -huh. me. Yeah, you did not know. Album. Jesus ask Christ. Crook, ask Crook and Joel. Ask Crook and Joel with the with. I believe that same guy. Didn't they do that one with Tony too? So mm. they did. They had did no, that. No, 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 no. They did that with the, uh, other comments. Joel. Mellow music. Mellow okay. Music Group. Okay, shout to Mellow Music Group. So they did a situation with Mellow Music Group, and they did it as, you know, Crook and Joel of Slaughterhouse. Joe got on his podcast, got them two on the phone, on the phone call to, 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 to big up the project. Oh, shit. To help, promote, to help promote the project. So the whole theory oh, that we have a problem album. with them doing music without us is to, it's to, it's totally debunked. I yeah. mean, I, we... We su I support everything that them, that them niggas do. Uh -huh. Everything. Whether I'm a part of it or not. And there's never been a time where any of them has asked me for a verse or anything else, and I didn't do it. And, it, and, and I had them niggas on Prime. I had them niggas on everything that I did without Slaughterhouse. All right. I made them a part of. Are they yeah. on the Heaven Experience? No. No. No, they're not on the Heaven Experience. But I mean... Um, Couldn't do it. Crooked, crooked is on. Crooked is on the allegory. Crooked is on my last album. That's right. true. Yeah. We shot a video together, and me and Crook, we talk, we talk all the time. So that picture they painted, that Do like you still know, talk now, no, but everything. No, but but we talked up to that point, talked all the time, and to in my from where I'm sitting, my, from my perspective, me and him were closer than me and Joe is, contrary mm. to the picture that they painted. Right. They painted it like me and Joe was just fucking butt buddies or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> wow. Joe is my nigga. I love Joe. You know what I'm saying? Like, me and Crook, I thought were even tighter than that. Mm. And I don't think I don't think it's like a, a given, like a prerequisite that everybody got to be so tight. I just I just feel like that me and Crook had like a unique Detroit and Cali kind of connection. You know what I'm saying? Like, we always bonded like from the very beginning. Me and Joe's relationship. You know, it, it's it's built from a reconciliation. You know what I'm saying? Like Joe with, came out and, and dissed me. I hated Joe. I started with a lie. Yeah. Started with, started with a big ass lie. What was the yeah. lie? I had to lie to him to tell him that Joe was cool. I had to lie to Joe to tell him that Royce was cool. To, Why? to even get the because at the time they had like light friction going back and forth over, over this what? beef that what? happened at SOBs. It's the same thing. Oh, the, no, the, same, the same thing. The, no, the same thing that it always was with Joe. He yeah. just. Came out of nowhere, disrespecting my name out of nowhere, and he don't know me. All right. Yeah. So okay. I had a huge problem with that because I was younger, I was drinking, and I just felt like, man, niggas don't play with me like that. Same mm. way Meth, Meth felt.
You know what I'm saying? So that's why I understood meth so much during that process. You right. know what I'm saying? And I had a lot of good conversations with Joe about um, trying to have, develop a better understanding of the ramifications of your words. You know what I mean? Like, right. there's a competitive edge that Joe has, especially in a realm of MCing, that's, that's just special. It's second to none. Right. So a lot of times, like MCs that he respect, he'll kind of come at them, whether it's indirect or however it is. You know what I'm saying? And right. if you're not like comfortable enough in your in yeah, your position, and you if you're yeah. not all the way there with it, self conscious in any way, it's gonna really affect you. It's gonna really affect you, and you may be ready to bust so, a nigga head. Yeah. Or, so you you, you guys are kind of like the same person there. No, I, I never do that. I'll, Who would I do that with? Who did I'm I do out. that? I'm who, out, fam. Who have I? We, who was have just, we was just talking about Lupe and uh, Mickey Fax, right? I'm out of here. This so when crazy. did I? When did I? Oh, <laughs> this is crazy. No, no, no. I'm talking about. I'm talking about just going out you there and disrespecting the niggas. You was on the line line trying to. Well, not trying. His you, point is that it never. Mickey. His point is that crazy. it never came out of him nowhere. Apologize. Are y'all even cool now? No, I'm not, but that but that conversation you you talking about that was after the fact. I was talking about Joe, like mentioning people. Yeah. Without knowing Random. them, just for no reason. People who don't, he, he didn't have any smoke with. Right. You know what I'm saying? But just feeling, feeling, feeling too comfortable speaking so candidly. You can feel how you want to feel about anybody, but speaking so candidly about other people and their legacies from on a public platform and then not really quite understanding why they so angry about it. Mm -hmm. I think I think that was like a problematic with him and his growth for a very long time. And so when we started Slaughterhouse, it became something that not only, his decisions didn't just affect him, it affected other people too, because we standing next to you too, me and Crook standing next to you too. Right. You know what I mean? So like these situations that have like, where it's possible that they can elevate and they can grow into some real fucked up shit. Yo man, like I'm not trying to put none of my people in that position and well, I'm not trying well, to be in that position because of because of the decisions of another man that I'm cool with, if that man is not willing to at least try to take some steps to start policing those flaws, I, you know, I, I get the feeling that you've been through some shit. Yeah. And whatever it was, you just you you're not trying to go in that direction at all, and even even considering your music projects and the message that you're pushing now, I feel like, I don't know what happened. One day I was riding in my car with no gun, sober, by myself. It was a sunny day. And I was like, holy shit. It never was about all of that shit. It never was about being a tough guy. It never was about how many niggas you killed. How many, it never was about none of that. This shit has always been about peace. Peace and love. You right. know what I mean? Like right. you, you, get, you, uh, you are able to accomplish more through love, through respect, through peace. How you get respect from other people is not through fear. It's not through, you know, like, um, like, uh, throwing your b views and beliefs onto other people, but peace just, I just love peace. I love the way that it feels. Now, the flip side to that is, don't get it twisted and think that I'm dodging all smoke, that I'm avoiding all smoke. Right. I'm just, I'm just not trying to go there if it can be, if it can be reconciled or talked through. What I found in my journeys and in my experiences is that it damn near ain't, it, there's damn near nothing that can't be reconcile and violence be prevented. Not in the music space, not in the rap space. Right. Not something that starts with somebody giving their candid opinion on a public platform. That's a young nigga making a stupid mistake. That's when it's time for niggas, the niggas that's around him to let them know that they disapprove of it and it's time for the OGs to step in. The Busta Rhymes and everybody that was, that was a part of Rock the Bells, everybody stepped in and kind of like told Joe about himself. And we ended up in the bathroom, me, Bus, Raekwon. And I told him in front of Raekwon, I was like, Joe, I love you. I'm going to always love you. But I, I, I just did not, I disapprove with the decision that you made, man. And I really feel like that you owe the OGs more than that. You know what I'm saying? I feel like you owe them an apology. Once again, I love you. I don't want to be an enabler and I'm always going to ride with you. But I'm going to be honest with you as well. Right. 
And he said, I love you too, and I understand that. And now, after everything that we've been through with this, Ray, I apologize to you, my brother. I'm sorry. Please accept my apology, and I will be careful with the things that I say moving forward. At least I'll do the best that I could. What pushes your pen? What pushes my pen? Yeah. It could be anything. It can be anything. Just it could be life experiences. It could be you know something that I'm reading at the time. Um, sometimes, but it's not. It's not. It's no longer competition at all. I mean, there's a competitive. There's a competitive spirit there, but the competitive part about it is the first thing that I ever nurtured, as far as the lyricist, being being like a battle lyricist who could shred other MCs. That was the, that was my first love with the pen, uh -huh. and um, I think that way of thinking, just as as far as it pertains to my evolution of uh, of my growth as a man. It's gotten me into a lot of situations that don't that doesn't suit me in terms of just my development as a as a human. What was the worst situation? Uh, probably the beefs, the beefs early on. You know what I mean? The beefs early on. I think I think um, if it had been an internet type of situation, it would have been even worse than what it was. Mm. You know, did, so, did somebody close to you get hurt in those situations? Um. Yeah, but I got, I mean, there, there was other beasts that was a derivative of that, of that situation because Detroit is so small where people, where a lot of people got seriously hurt. You know what I mean? And um, I, think, I think that happens when, when you got a lot of popular people involved in the situation and then you have the people who, the are, who are standing on the side the who always have to be speaking, it's always who always have to be yeah. either instigating or just kind of like fueling it. Right. And it's our responsibility as the as the focal point as the as the focal point people to get out ahead of that and not allow it to grow to a point where we can't fix it, and that's kind of like what happened. Yeah. And that's that's when it goes back to me being me being drunk so often during those situations and not being able to just be my regular cool self and talk things out, you know. And then you know, like when me and Proof finally seen each other after shit had gotten all out of control. Yeah. You know, we argued with each other for a minute, and then once we walked away from the crowd and we were talking to each other, it was like my nigga from 97 all over again. Right. You know what I mean? But that's what we always were. That's what we always were, but we allowed the situation to get the best of us. Right. And just looking at that in retrospect, it costed us a lot of time. There was a lot of things that we could have did, myself and D12, that we could have did together in solidarity that would have been way more effective. And it would have probably been something way my, more self-serving to where we are now. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Way on both on that. both sides. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Way more because what that. happens when you build something, you take for granted what you have, and then you allow it to be kind of destroyed, and then you got to figure out a way to reinvent. You know what I mean? Right. Everybody doesn't have that thing where they can figure out how to keep reinventing within this shit. But when you build something that's tried and, tr tried and true, like McDonald's doesn't have to reinvent. Maybe they, they can fucking re yeah. they can rename a burger or something, but they yeah. don't have to reinvent the wheel over there. You know what I mean? Like they not they not they selling you convenience. You know what I'm saying? Like you know what you're paying for. They providing that, and they a billion dollar company because of that because they understand their brand. It's not two partners in the corporation that is McDonald's even considering walking away and ruining McDonald's to go make another cheeseburger with somebody. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and, it's just, and it's just like, so it starts with the thinking. Right. It starts with the thinking. And like a lot of these executives and key players that are in the business, they're cultivated and nurtured and created right. by other executives and people that are coming before them who want to make sure that the lineage is in place. Their you mentor, know what I mean? And the nepotism, the nepotism and the privilege stays intact because that gives people the upper hand. Right. You know, so when we keep making decisions within our own group of people to kind of like clash with that, there will never be the nepotism that we deserve. And the reason why I think we deserve nepotism in black culture is because black culture, culture, our culture runs this shit. Mm -hmm. right. Our culture controls the biggest, the biggest portion of the market share always, even when even when the numbers aren't being reported as that. Right. Yeah, that's true. You know? And I just, I just think, I think it's in the best interest of the, of the powers that be who control um, the messaging from, from a major standpoint, from a major label and, and, and major big stage perspective. I think it's in their best interest to kind of uh, downplay and undervalue our culture. But same with the Grammys, same with anything. If I, 
you know, if, you, if it's somebody as massive as Kanye West and, and as influential as Kanye West, and he's willing to go on a public platform and basically yell about not being recognized by the Grammys or by Forbes magazine, then it's almost not in Forbes magazine or Grammys best interest business wise to adhere to what he's demanding because the power is in his desire to be recognized, right. not in not in them getting Being it right. Recognizing right. So it's like, at what point do we stop yelling about the problem? We already know what the problem is. I think the bigger fix is for us to identify with the value that is us and then start to create new cycles that are indicative of what our value is. Is this is this what uh, the heaven experience represents? The heaven experience is just a, it's, it's a re-release of a lot of the masters just in my possession now. And it's, why, it's, why the heaven experience? It's just a new it's, it's a it's the beginning of a new conversation. You know, heaven. Heaven is the name of my studio, as you know. And there's a complete experience that comes along with that. It's also the name of my label. There's a complete experience that comes along with that. That's that's a little bit more. Um, it's a little bit more fine tuned than just um, brass tacks business. Associated black Dota and white scene, business. Right? There's a, yeah. There's my man Courtney Bell. He's not si he's not signed to me, but he's somebody who um, I took a liking to, and I made sure that I went out of my way to embrace and help and, and mentor and anything that I can do as much as I can. Mm -hmm. Try to help with the development, the artist development, and, and try to help with just a lot of the man decisions. You know, like the life decisions, because I think that's kind of like. Those decisions, the right decisions being made is ultimately what determines whether you are able to scale a brand or not. Why not sign them? I mean, you know, th that's something that could happen down the line, you know, but um, there's a lot of things to consider on my side. Number one, um, I still got a few things left in the tank to say as an artist. Y you know, um, I'm still very excited about Prime, especially with what happened with Slaughterhouse. I, I, I almost feel... Um, I almost feel ordained to make sure that 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 brand reaches its plateau. You know what I mean? Like right. I want it to reach its zenith and I feel really good about it being able to do that because of how much I trust Preem, yeah. him as a person. You know what I mean? Like I just don't, I just think that's the right, he's the right guy to stay partnered up with. Like he shows all the signs of somebody who's not gonna let me down. You know what I mean? And when I say that, I mean as a person. I mean in business, you know what I mean? And we disagree just like anybody else can disagree. Mm -hmm. But I think he gets it. He's been around so long and I think he's another one of the DJs, the icons that understands what his role is. And he kind of he kind of plays that. He doesn't cater to what's considered current. He, he's never panicked, been in a state of panic and felt like that he needed to change his sound right. to match with the times. You've always went to Premier to, to get what Premier what Premier yeah, does, yeah. and and Premier, you know, the the whole effect of his scratches and everything like that. That's the experience that you're paying him for, right. and I think that him understanding that and never wavering from that is the reason why the longevity of DJ Premier is what it is. Now you said um, Slaughterhouse could get to uh, could have could have gone to Dr. J. I think so. I think that that was. A, that was a possibility when you start thinking about just the resources that, that were readily available to us just because of how long that we've been around and, and you know what what everybody has to offer to the situation and what we bring to the table is more than just ill bars. Joe has a Rolodex. I have a Rolodex. Crooked and Joel, they have Rolodexes. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like we all I'm not the only one coming to the table with beats from people. You know what I'm saying? Like right. they bring in beats to people. We can get you on the phone. You can send beats. We can fly you in. We, sky's the limit on what we can do when we pool our resources together. Here's a question. But the second we start working against each other is when, you know, it's just to our detriment and nobody else's. Nobody pays that price but us. Are you, are you considering going, working with Dre again on a project, complete on a, project? On a whole project? Yeah. I never really thought about that. I never really thought about that, but I think that that's something. What the fuck? I never really thought oh, about that. But I mean, y'all asking you considering tripping, with Dre, like he's just gonna walk in, and, like Dre might be doing. So it gotta be synergy too. Yeah, I don't. I don't. He think, can't just I, walk I in. Think, and he's yeah. just gonna be like, I wanted to sign you twenty not, years not, ago. I'm not gonna saying sign you it now. Would, Not saying it would happen super smooth, but like not to say I've never. I'm not. I haven't thought of that. Like, I yeah, come I on, man. I haven't thought it. I haven't thought of that. Not in the same realm as how I think of working with Jay-Z. 
probably in the same realm of how people thought to work with Michael Jackson. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. By Wishful the way, thinking. What business model do you follow? Being that you was young, you said it was different. What's your business model that you follow to keep you pumping, successful? And there's a few of them. When it comes to creativity, um, I'm, I'm quality over quantity. Um, I, I think that um, I can do a little better with the, with the quantity, though. Um, that's what I kind of been focused on as of as of recent. Um, my output just a little bit stronger. I think right. I think these are the times for that. You know what I mean? Like if there's ever a time where I, I want to think about how the times are, and how to be effective with considering how the times are, it would be a little bit more consistency with the releases, just because of how fast everything is moving and people are kind of out of sight, out of mind. Right. So. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how to do that and maintain the quality, but not not rushing shit, not rushing shit and just speaking just to be speaking. You know what right. I mean? Like I don't want to burn myself out either. So that's kind of like my business model in terms of creativity. When it comes to business, um, because of Slaughterhouse and because of Prime and because of Bad Meets Evil, my focus is gonna always be to build things. It's right. gonna always be to build brands and to own and to oh. own it. That's my business model. I got but it. I'm open to having conversations with labels and any other entities that you can think of and getting real creative with the part the kind of partnerships that we can do and really open to taking the things that i've built already and kind of figuring out new ways to kind of pull the equity out of what i am you know right. what i mean so i'm pretty open in that regard you well, know what i mean so i we've we've um we've spoke about a lot of uh of turmoil and 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 you know how how things should be and all that and but but the base of this music is about feeling it's about you know being creative and and finding some joy in that what's the most fun that you've ever had in the studio creating can i jump in on it? of course to me because he was saying you know lyrical competition one of your most shining moments was remember the titans Mm -hmm. with Fab, Joe, and Banks. And mm -hmm. then you had a ill lines, you know, fiends touching their nose like URL rappers. But my favorite line, and it's ignorant, and it fucked my head up because I didn't figure it out years later. <laughs> you know what I'm about to say, right? Nope, but go ahead. Uh, I just found out I could fly to Dubai and hire Buffy the body. <laughs> 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 he was ahead of the curve. You know and what, I was like, why did he say that? You know, you know, you know what's crazy? <laughs> you see? You know what, what's crazy with that verse is there's a backstory to that verse. The Ooh. backstory was um, that was when, when me and Joe really start first fucking around with each other. Yeah. And he had his own fans, and that's when I learned that all fans ain't the same. It's not the same. Right. You know what I'm saying? And even though just because we in a group, it don't mean that people who prior who previously followed Joe is gonna automatically take to me, right. Crooked or Joel. Right. So a lot of them was like, oh man, don't put Royce on it, man. Like he, mm, he, I, I he, can't, he can't hang with them, with y'all on that track, you know what I'm saying? Because they already had a, a certain way that they viewed Banks, Fab, Fab Joe. Joe. They kind of all come from the same, you know, Joe and Fab kind of come from the same, even look school. And then Banks kind of, he represents he, that same thing, right. you know, just in his own way. So me not really being known as a punchline rapper and shit like that, and them not really knowing me from that, they just felt like I was going to get washed on it. So it was like a whole big thing on Twitter between me and the fans. So when I went in, my aim, my aim was to just like kind of kill shit. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, you killed that one. That was one of the situations where that was good controversy. That was something where everybody was happy. Everybody was happy about it. Nobody was offended. Nobody fell out with nobody. Yeah. Nothing was messy. It was just, you know, it was just dialogue and, and people fed into it who cared about it. Right. And then we move on. You know what I mean? Like that to me, that's the fun shit. That's that's where the building comes from. That's how you acquire fans. That's how you win people over one person at a time. Is that the moment? That's no, no. So to answer your question. Mm. My, my funnest moments by far, without even having to think, Slaughter. was moments in the studio with Slaughter. Slaughterhouse. I'm just gonna say that. That was th those are my those are the funnest times. I saw those. And if and if we and if we in the studio and we not having those same fun times, nothing that we do in that studio will work. Yeah. That's part of it. It has to be like that, or it can't be. It can't be anything. It's that, or it's nothing. We got we got to have that same chemistry. We can't be in there. We got to be those same four hungry kids 
with not really much of a motive other than just killing shit. We don't know what the shit is about to be. All we know is people are reacting to it and we, sh we need to just keep doing it. It turned into something we didn't know it was going to turn into. Once it turned into that, agendas st started to enter the, into the situation, you know, and, and agendas that are understandable ones. Nobody had aspirations of being a group member at, on any level prior, right. to, the, prior right. to that point. So when we did our last album that, that got shelved on Shady, the music was great. And that's the thing. There's no problem with us being able to do music together. We can Where, always where's do Where's those that. records? They just sitting on Shady. So they still have those records. Yeah. But you guys got the imprint back. Yeah, they paid for them. That's yeah, the, they, 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 they belong some. to them. Yeah, they, they wow. paid for them joints. They belong to they them. They invoiced them. I mean, but that was a, that end. was a, that's a whole that was a whole another fight that um that we talked about. We all four of us talked about. And we all agreed that that's not something. That's not a fight that we even. We don't need to have that fight. We can make we can make new music. We trying don't to get Glass House back. Huh? Trying to get up. What was the name of that album? Yeah, Glass trying House. to get trying to get Glass House. Yeah. We felt like we can do better music. You know what I mean? And it and it was just I think all of us were approaching it trying to figure out how to be the most amicable we can be. You know what I'm saying? Because we, we're approaching it we're approaching it we're approaching a, a a label that we still respect. You know, like we don't have hard feelings toward. We don't feel like we've been wronged or anything like that. It just reached a point where, you know, we couldn't we couldn't see eye to eye on something. So we move on. You know uh -huh. what I mean? And, uh -huh. it, and if it, if it's if I got to beat if I got to go to Eminem and beat him up on a personal level as his friend and beat him up about giving us that back, then yeah, I could have did that. But why would I want to do that? Why would I want to put him in that position? You know what I mean? So I personally I think we Glass House is a great album, but I think it's a reflection of where we were at that in that particular moment when we were recording it. And it was an interesting place that we were in. A very, very personal, introspective album. I had just got sober. Crook was in at the height of his alcoholism. Joe was just doing reality TV. Joe only wanted to work in the daytime. Me and Crook had only wanted to work in the, at nighttime. Joel had lost a mad weight, had a high top fade, was working out and only wanted to work early in the morning. You know what I'm saying? And then, yeah. you know, we didn't get a, a lot of time to spend with each other. But when we made music, you know, people added their verses. It was just something about it where it was like everything just kind of came out dope. Right. But the synergy wasn't there. And we that's kind of like the price that we paid for that. Synergy synergy wow. is a big deal. Mm -hmm. You still want to hear it? The people hear underestimate yeah, all yeah. the time. That synergy is very key. Yeah, especially with the rise. Especially when it comes when it comes um you can't especially me especially when especially when it comes so easily. You feel like you can you can recreate it just at any time. I yeah. hear the way people talk about it. Can't y'all just replace Joe with somebody else? Can't y'all just no. yo? We're not the fucking Backstreet Boys, bro. It's, it's what it is. It's a it's a it's a the brand Slaughterhouse became really big, but the, not big in a way where the brand supersedes the members. The brand does not supersede any member. You can't replace any member of Slaughterhouse and it still be the same magic that is Slaughterhouse. You can go create a whole new thing mm -hmm. with it. There's plenty of guys that are, that are monsters that you can, you can do amazing things with, but not, not Slaughterhouse. Wow. Was Slaughterhouse a remake of D12? I had always wondered that. Not at all. Slaughterhouse was actually formed. Um, we were formed on the internet because guys like Mecca with influence, they noticed that um, there was a lot of guys on a major stage collaborating with each other so swagger like us was a song with a bunch of with a bunch of juggernauts on the song right so i think people were just kind of tired of like the commercial aspect of it and the friendly aspect of it right. and felt like that there were a lot of guys on the internet which was considered the underground at that time that were lyrically killing shit and it was a lot of people who felt like lyrics needed to come back because Hip hop as a genre had made so, it had morphed into so many different things over the years. At that time, you know, we went through through the snap dance era. We went through the big baggy white T-shirt era. We went through the south the south era. We went through so many different things that that some people may have been kind of displeased with, and just was kind of ready. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Just kind of ready for for 
people to kind of unite. Just bars. Can, can yeah, just for the sake bars of hearing some in bars. Different yeah. areas, Jersey, California. But we, yeah, Detroit. we didn't we didn't know we didn't know that people were gonna like take to it like that. So when they when they reacted the way that they reacted, we just our thing was to just keep doing it, just keep just keep doing it and see where it can go. I knew. Fuck it, I knew. You you knew that we were gonna become a group. Fuck it. I, once y'all squashed the beef, I figured. When I saw y'all doing more than one thing, I was like, all right, they're going to they gonna start rocking. Did you ever get PC off of that? Not. All I wanted was the, all I wanted was the varsity jacket. I didn't even want not shit. What varsity jacket? Yeah, I had a varsity jacket on one of the covers. It was a Slaughterhouse varsity jacket. That was the only thing I actually wanted for my contribution. Can, can my varsity? man get his varsity jacket? Oh, get so that I, man his varsity jacket. Can my jacket. man get his varsity you know jacket? What, you know what? I think my wife had that made. It was a black and white, black white leather sleeves, black varsity jacket, SH right here. Shit was so brolic. It was the only thing I ever called a label and asked for. No, the, the, the label, the label didn't make those. No, it was the, I didn't know who to ask. Yeah, it was yeah, the only I thing, think, and that shit was on the cover. It was I think my wife, I think my with. wife may have had that, may have had that one made. I think it was just one of those that existed. Who had it on? Was it Joe? No, nobody had it on. Nobody was wearing it. What is he talking about? You know. I'll show you. I, I, if I if I find it, I'll find. He got it. Cause yeah. I know I had I know I had one. It had the pig on the back and it had then my why signature are you asking, right. Yeah. Ex why? So you know what I'm talking about? Okay. So you are talking about the one that my wife had made? I can get you one of those, mate. There you go. I can do that. Extra that's, large. That's sir. That's the least I can do. My that's man. the least I can do. My man. Sir. I, I I love and respect you and appreciate you for for um for that for that um insight. For that, for that, for that inspiration and for that suggestion, you know what I mean. I love and appreciate Kino for the suggestion that he made within, during that situation, and in that process. Because, listen, man, if you just left me to my normal toxic way of dealing with things, I was gonna fuck Joe up, in my mind, <laughs> assuming I could fuck Joe up. Yeah. I was gonna fuck Joe up in my mind, you know what I mean? Because I felt like he crossed such a major line, and what we could do together just coming together it wasn't even a thought in my mind like it nothing had ever happened to me prior where I can even even put that kind of a thought in my mind you know what I mean you know when I knew y'all y'all make for a group because when I lied to you about what Joe said and I lied to him about what you said y'all both said the same thing in response well, well, which was what I asked Joe to get on it Joe said who's on it I named all the names first thing he said was what did Royce say and I said Royce said, if you ain't beefing, he ain't beefing. That was a lie. That was a huge lie. I hadn't even spoken to Royce yet. Right. That was a huge lie. Yeah. And Joe said, all right, cool, because I've always felt like that was some internet shit anyway. I ain't really have no real problem. Yeah, anymore. I ain't really had no real problem. And then I called him. And you did the same thing. And I said the exact what same shit. What did he say? He said, all right, cool, because that beef shit sounded corny anyway, but tell Joe, if he come out his face, I'll blow his fucking head off. Well, you know what? And I was like, yeah, that'll work. That's that's what you know, I'm telling you. You know what though? Back then, back then, like when he when he did that, uh, I just kind of wanted to see him. I wanted to see him face to face. So when, after we ended up starting a group and we started looking at shit in retrospect, we started talking about what each what each other were, was thinking in those moments before we got cool with each other. He he told me that he wrote a diss record about me. And his boy, his boy Brandon and them talked him, talked him out of releasing it. I also Shout wrote- Shout out to Killer BH. You also yeah. wrote- I also wrote a diss plenty record. of diss records about him. Yeah. Now, a lot of them were on Bar Exam 2, right? So that's what he really was tripping about. He was like, all right, I said that one thing about Royce. He get that one response, but this nigga just keep taking shots at me. You know what I'm saying? So he did like a video saying, tell Royce the five nine, I said, if he say one more thing about me, I'm gonna tear his ass up. And I remember him making that video and I remember me trying to do like at least a hundred different variations of a response video. And Vish kept telling me, no, that ain't it. Shout out to Kim no, Vicious. That ain't it. And then I went and did another record. All I remember is saying something about Tahiri in it, and Kino calling me and telling me. No, nah, you shouldn't release that. That's going to blow up in your face. You shouldn't, you shouldn't do that. And I remember being mad at him. So when we finally got on the phone, I went on the phone. I got on the phone with him, but I went against my better judgment and did that. And when I got on the phone with him, he didn't even mention the beef at all. I was nervous as shit. He didn't, he, I he, just he, he didn't, he didn't mention, number. he didn't mention, 
the beef at all. So when we finally did the song and it, it, it reacted the way that it reacted, me, him and Keno got on the phone and I remember um, me and him being like, listen, me and you need to do more. But I was saying just me and you. And me and Joe was on some shit like, all right, me and you gonna do more shit. Keno was like, nah, it should be all oh, you. Yeah. And it's like, I was like, yo, why are we gonna just keep making fucking songs? You know what I'm saying? Like making posse cuts. He was like, nah, y'all should be a group. Mm -hmm. I remember him saying that. You know what too though, Mac, what you don't know? He ain't wanna do the song. But at that time, cause we just got out of jail. So what nobody, we ain't know where we stood. Mm -hmm. Crooked was, I don't know if you remember this. Crooked was on fire with hip hop. Cause he was doing those weekly joints. He asked him to do, well he asked him to get on the song and Crooked didn't do it. Joel so I wasn't, was I wasn't really fucking with Crooked. So Joel was, was getting hot, and then Joe was Joe. Mm -hmm. So when he was talking about this and niggas, my thing was, you know, we don't really know these other niggas he fucking with, and we wasn't going to beat them all. I didn't think so at that time. Mm -hmm. I was like, but if you get on the record with them, and you flame them, then it's a win-win for us, because you're going to get their fans. And you can die right. Who had the hottest verse on that one? Who had the hottest verse on that one? It never came out. No, which which never, record? You talking, talking about, about the one that I was putting together yeah. with? It never came out. We never did it. I only, only, I only have Crook's verse still in my email. What, what record is this? You talking the about? Swagger Like Us. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, us rapping over that beat? Yeah, that never that No, never Joe happened. took your idea and did, and, and did, and did the, the first Slaughterhouse. I know, song. and then they Slaughter Mouse and Sergeant Slaughter. I know. I never said nothing. Wow. It's all good. Yeah, so, so, so basically, Mac had an idea for all of us to jump on Swagger Like Us. Joe took the idea, called me, and said, yo, I'm going to put you, Crooked Eye, Joel, Ortiz on a song. And Nino no Bless. And I was like, oh, shit, that sounds like a slaughterhouse. Yeah. He was like, I might call it that. So he called the song Slaughterhouse. And that's how we became Slaughterhouse. slaughterhouse. Wow. You, you know what I'm saying? But, but Synergy again. We, it, started out, it started out just on some just on some competitive shit in our minds. And um, then it turned into, at least from my perspective, me realizing that I'm not as good as I thought I was. Because <laughs> I, I was kinda seeing the culture, looking at the landscape through my own little microwave door. You know what I mean? Like through my own lens. You know, I'm in, the, in Detroit in the studio every day. Nobody that comes in the studio around any session of mine in Detroit raps better than me. You know what I'm saying? So uh. I thought I was God's gift to lyricism. Mm. You know what I mean? And I, I specifically remember when we all started meeting up with each other and we were going to uh, Red Spider's crib and uh, we, we were working on the, the second song that we did and Crook flew in and he got in late and everybody's verse was late and everybody was talking shit, competitive shit. Like how me and Lupe and everybody was doing. That's always been fun to me. That's always been a fun part of it to me. Right. Crook and I came in late off a plane. He was the last one there. We ain't no, really know each other like that. Nobody, we was more comfortable with each other than, than we were with Crook because he was way on the West Coast. Man, that nigga came in and Body. stepped on niggas. Stepped on niggas. And did it fast too. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And it was like when he did that, I remember being like, shit and not really wanting to kind of admit it because I thought maybe it may be a fluke. And then he just kept, <laughs> he just kept doing it. He just kept doing it and doing <laughs> yeah. it and doing it. And then it turned into, well, maybe this can kind of be his role in the, the group. Anchor, the anchor, the last When it game. came time to doing the album, you know, I just kind of started to take on the he form of like, yeah, yeah, I, no, yeah. I, I kind of started taking on the form of like the person that kind of oversees the records. And once everybody start kind of like playing more of a position, then it, 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 it turned special. When we was trying to just out-rap each other, it was just some internet shit, you yeah. know what I mean? But once we start making records and everybody start falling into a position and start getting comfortable with playing that position, as long as, as, long as nobody tried to step in somebody else's role, shit pretty much clicked really yeah. easy, you know what wow. I'm saying? So at that moment, I stopped even putting myself under the pressure of trying to out-rap Crooked. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Crooked Eye, man. Shout, shout out to Joel. Man. Shout out to Joe. <sighs> Y'all pull it back. The together. saga continues. Word. Saga continues. Um, it's been awesome. Always awesome, my brother. Always, 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 always love always. and respect, man. Always an honor and a privilege to be here. I know it's a lot of places that you, you know, you yeah. guys, you, you distinguished gentlemen could be <laughs> other than here. I want you to know that I don't take that lightly. You know what I mean? I want you to know that I see you, great man. 
You know what I mean? Thank I remember you, you were slapping niggas on the battle rap stage. Yeah. I can't even see you doing that now. You know what I mean? And to That's me, I, to me, I feel like it's, it's, it's all right to be, you know, a certain way when you're young. It's all right. I'm, I'm more of the thinking of being more understanding of what a nigga may have been going through. And, and a nigga's ignorance and lack of understanding at that age is always understandable when it's something redeeming that comes behind it. Right. I don't look at Jay-Z and see a drug dealer. I don't look at you and see a battle rapper no more. You know what I mean? And not, and I, not to say that battle rappers aren't great. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying everything is evolution. Everything is evolution and what you're doing and what it looks like your, your tra trajectory is in the content space, space, I personally feel like that it's going to by far supersede what you were able to do in the battle rap space. And I commend you for that. Salute. 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 Royce to 5'9". The Heaven Experience. <laughs> Go get that. Elevate. Next time I had a fucking air on, man. When I came <laughs> it's hot for trap trapper turned smack rapper. Only smack rapper that you know is smack rappers. Got bars I can hang with the backpackers. Trap star, I don't hang with the backpackers. I'm in the hood with the work you heard. Making fiends leave earth you heard. Got your baby mama thirst you heard. Feel the flow, nigga, throw it in reverse. This the way you need to surf you heard.